what's up, folks? This is Sam from Condemned, San Diego Death Metal, and you're listening to the Phantasm Podcast. Phantasm. This is Philip H. Anselmo. My name is Ken Corey. Hey, this is Thor Gasson. Shane Embry, bass player of Napalm Death. Rocco Pugliaria. What's up, everybody? This is Ross Dolan from Immolation. What's up, everybody? It's Keith Bush from Armored Scene. Hello, Deathsters. This is Martin Van Gruenen from Asterix. And uh, you're listening to Phantasm Podcast. What the fuck is up and welcome to the Phantasm Podcast. I am Corey Gorkreist, with me as always, Dr. Vincent West. Hello, how are you? And uh, awesome episode for you guys today, so excited for this one. Uh, the doctor knocked out an interview with Sam of Condemned. Uh, fucking awesome, really insightful, long ass interview, it's really long, it's really almost considered... Uh, just leaving the interview by itself it's so long but you know we put it up on YouTube so you guys can listen to it if you just want to hear the interview yep. but you guys are in for the long haul we fucking congratulate you guys thank you um, but if you're listening to this this whole thing uh, please go pick up His Divine Shadow by Condemned via Unique Leader Records it's available now so go fucking grab grab you guys a copy they got some Smile of the month they got some sick ass fucking merch album of the month sick ass merch uh, the doctor's wearing a shirt right now of him uh, the his divine shadow shirt and uh, got some great packages for that so definitely go pick that shit up uh, if you get a chance and uh, some fundage and uh, what do we have for him today doctor as we see this uh, we have uh, Friday the 13th part 7 he was the first to make your heart pound. Where is he? He was the first to make you scream for mercy. He's probably out there somewhere. He's the first name in terror. <laughs> and he's about to meet the last word in destruction. Don't want to mess around with me. Friday the 13th, part 7, The New Blood. Rated R. Starts Friday, May 13th at a theater near you. And the I, first movie with Kane Hodder. Yeah, it came out May 13th, 1988. John Carl Buechler directed it, as well as did the effects, which is part of the reason this movie is so awesome. Uh, it's just great. We did we watched Dolls, which is another one of his gems, so we did a, an episode of that, which was really good. That was our Defeated Sanity episode. Yeah. So. Yep. Shout out to you guys. Thanks for again for the, uh, the awesome time. That was really fun. Uh, we had a good time. So uh, right now we're going through the recap of all the films leading up to this, and of course there is the Jason Lives, the C.J. Graham Jason looking in the, in the eyes. And what I have here, actually, from my personal collection, the the Gore Christ collection, I have the uh, double feature two pack of the Blu-ray. Uh, I believe these released. Coinciding with the first Blu-ray set, they put these out individually. No, no. What? Okay, were these before? This though? is this is interesting. I'm actually glad that you brought that up. Okay, so here's the deal. So the box set came out, which is out of print. It's in a steel container and it, it has all of everything. Yeah, it's it. awesome. It's even got the Crystal Lake uh, memories or whatever it is. The no, that's not in there. It's not in no, there. No, it is not in there. Huh? No, I thought that was in the box. No, set. but there is every other goddamn thing is in that set. All the movies. Or everything. is it his name was Jason? Is that the one? That's not in there either. Wow. Okay. It's But those were made by different film companies. That's why those aren't in there. Although those are available and you can still buy those. Actually, the irony is they're the only things that are in print. Huh. Okay. Other than apparently the very first film. Anyway. So you, that box set came out. And then for whatever reason, because Warner Brothers is who distributed it, even though all those titles are Paramount, but mm-hmm. Warner Brothers had sold or had bought some of uh, the Viacom titles from Paramount. Uh, Viacom owns Paramount. And then a couple years later, they put out what, what we're watching, uh, which is the... And it's the same... The menus are different, but it's the same uh, Blu-ray versions that are in the box set. Uh but what doesn't make any sense about it is is when these double features came out they were incredibly hard to find yeah you couldn't order them except maybe off online and that's assuming you could even find them and now they're all out of print right 
In fact, if you look it up online right now, the only one that's in print is part five and part six, and I don't know why. Any yeah. of the other, like the three and four one are gone, they're worth a lot of money. The one we're watching, the seven and eight, the last one. Which I found at a local FYE. Yeah, uh, and it's, and it's you know, so scouring places like that definitely pays off, but I don't know. It's really weird. It doesn't make any sense, like the way, the way that that happened, but I, I'm not really sure why. Uh, those were put out in such a limited fashion, and the box set doesn't exist. Right. The box set is is worth about two or three hundred bucks now. Yeah. And there was some, there was also some confusion when that thing came out as to whether or not uh, there was uh, the the mastering process on these. And in fact, they actually they took them from a japan that some japanese prints of some japanese high, uh hd dvds is where these prints came from okay so but but yeah so uh you you got them and find you a few more of them but it's 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 interesting and you know i don't ever see it used i don't ever see the the, the box set or whatever and, and it was it was it was actually more limited than uh then the Halloween box set they did a few years ago. That thing, right. that thing's gone, you know. So it's the only one you can get of that as well as the standard one. But. So that's the one we're watching. It's the double feature. Same thing if you guys have the box set at home or the Blu-ray. Yeah, just pop the Blu-ray in because both. So you can watch the that, films were the same thing together. We're watching. Yeah, right. Yeah. And uh, this movie, like I said, came out May thirteenth, uh, nineteen eighty-eight. So. Uh, I believe, obviously, it was a Friday when it came out, which is awesome that they did that. So, um, October 13th, October 31st, you reverse the numbers. Right. It's pretty awesome. And then I guess, while we're talking about this, I guess I should bring this up, too. Apparently, there's a new Friday the 13th film for 2017. I keep reading. Supposed to be. And while we're on the subject of it, I... I, you know, and I'm excited about this. Is apparently there's there's some Halloween film coming out this year that John Carpenter scored and wrote. Right. And by the way, while we're doing this, uh, happy birthday to John Carpenter. Happy birthday. His birthday. It's, it was either yesterday or today. Happy birthday to the one of the living masters of horror. Let me double check that because I actually don't know the answer to that. Well, the only reason I know that, and I'll share that with you guys, it won't matter by the time you hear this, but I'm going to tell you anyway. Screen Factory has all his titles on sale for dirt cheap today. Nice. Actually, this whole weekend. So. I'm trying to remember here. Uh, yeah, his birthday is the 16th. So, uh, they're doing a pre-John Carpenter's birthday. So, his birthday is actually the 16th. Oh, okay. Of January. So, either way, happy birthday, John. Uh uh, we Speaking could. of, uh, so we did on our last episode, which was try to do a new feature for you, and that's uh, going to go through the movies of '88, all the good ones anyway, and uh, see what al- what also came out in yeah, 1988. Definitely. Of course, horror, and maybe you know some notable good ones. Uh, speaking of John Carpenter, They Live came out in 1988. Um. Who Framed Roger Rabbit, which is a great, great movie, honestly. It's a weird movie. It is. Uh, Beetlejuice, which I didn't know it was that old. I thought it came out in, like, the 90s. You know, I never liked that movie. I love Michael Keaton. That's why I like it. But I never could get into that movie. I, that movie I hated Genia Davis ever since I well, saw got, The Fly. We've got to talk so. about this. The, the only... Exactly. The the only... You, you either love Beetlejuice or you don't like it. I don't think there's a middle ground on that film. It's like uh, Pee-wee's Big Adventure. Pee-wee's Big Adventure is either, you know, you're really into it or you're really not into it. I'm really into it. It's Wednesday the 25th. It's the uh, Brugeria. It's going to be a good show for any of you guys that will be in Atlanta. Uh, yeah, definitely a show to check out. And if you don't know who Brujeria is, then you need to come back to this podcast. Just go check them out now. Um, let's see, back to 1988 movies. We got Die Hard, everyone's favorite non-Christmas movie. 
Uh, let's see. I'm going to try to find some horror. Midnight Run. That's for the doctor. I'm a huge fan of that movie. Child's Play. Yep. Another classic. Uh, Hellbound Hellraiser 2. The Blob remake that we did. That was the first episode we did. I love that movie. Was the Blob remake. Uh, Dead Ringers. It's a good movie. David Cronenberg. Yep. Uh, Nightmare on Elm Street 4. The movie's okay. Halloween 4. So, I mean, they're already well into that. Jason's on fucking 7, if that tells you anything. Yeah. <laughs> uh, of course, they started in 19... 19- you know, eighty on these movies. So, um, and you got Poltergeist three, which I've never seen. So, Poltergeist three is my favorite Poltergeist film. Is it? It is. I've never seen it. It in part two because part two. I like part two. Part two, Screaming Mad George did the makeup for. So. Awesome. Uh, Cocoon: The Return. That's a horrible movie. <laughs> is it? <laughs> um. That's the, 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 let me tell you what Cocoon's about. Let me let me share this with everybody out there. This movie never had any appeal to me. It's geriatric people like Wilford Brimley that go dip in this alien goo and they feel like they're in their twenties again. It's disgusting. That's what the whole film is about, and they fuck and but they take a dip in this lagoon and it, this goo gets on them and they and they they feel young. It's horrible. Horrible films. Why anybody would ever want to watch those films? You just have someone spunk on you. That's you know. It's just gross. I don't know. The whole idea of that just freaks me out. See, uh, Killer Clowns from Outer Space came out in '98 or '88. Sorry, it's a great movie. Maniac Cop. Yeah, I like that movie. Night of the Demons. Love that movie. Uh, that one's really grown on me. I didn't used to really have an opinion about it, but I actually I like that one. Oh, it's it's a really. Uh, it's weird. But yeah, it's, it's a weird it's movie, but it's good. it's campy. Uh, Phantasm Two was eighty eight. Yeah, saw that which in the theater. Is fucking awesome. That is that is another episode we've done. If you want to, it's a go great, to that great, one. great, great movie. I'm a huge fan of that movie. Uh, I just love that movie. You got the Nest, which is uh, the Doctor's favorite movie. Bob, that's probably your favorite too. No, <laughs> it's about the goddamn cockroach. Yeah, I can't do it. <laughs> you know, I own that. Uh, slugs. Slugs is another disgusting film that Arrow put out last year. Yeah, that's gross. It's nothing. It's just gross. Yeah. And it's a it's a Euro film. It was on New World Pictures. Like they're, they're the same. I guess when they acquired the rights, when they got Hellraiser, they bought a bunch of just other New World duds, <laughs> like Microwave Massacre. Which, yeah. If anybody's curious about that, we will never be doing that because that uh, that was purchased by a friend of ours, Jens, which you may have heard us mention before. And I got tortured into watching that. It's a horror comedy, and it was terrible. Uh, Dead Heat came out in 88. I own that on Blu-ray. I think it's actually worth some money. Yeah? It's like a Divi Max Blu-ray or something. It was... Uh, who put that out? Uh, Image put that out. Yeah. That's an older release. Let's actually find out if that's out of print. It's time for the doctor's out-of-print list. <laughs> Which is... Is it out of print? Everything you own. Out of print. Pretty much. Well, I mean, here's the thing, and I'll, I've never said this before, at least I don't See, I'm, recall I'm still... saying it. If there's something that comes out you guys want, and I'm going to I'm going to tell you one right now. This is the best example of this. Everybody has a Walmart, whoever we're talking to, I think probably on here, pretty much has a, access to a Walmart. Why would you not treat yourself to the first Phantasm on Blu-ray? Right, which I still haven't. But, well, yeah. it's actually, it's $15 right now again on sale at Best yes. Buy. Uh, oh, and, and treat yourself. Hang on, I believe uh, to the first phantasms. I don't want to see her skin, but we might get the Mister Skinless. I mean, we had some fucking going on. We're at twelve fifty three for those of you watching at home. So we're we're gonna see here. So far, it's soft core. There's nothing going on. There's no no. I'm sorry to disappoint, guys, but Dead Heat is not out of print. You can get it for ten dollars. The Midnight movies from uh, Image Entertainment. It's a great film if, if people have never seen it. It's actually Joe Piscopo. Another movie from 88 that came out, and this is ties to uh, something we have in the works for you guys in the coming weeks uh, as far as a guest. Uh, Waxwork came out in 1988. Love. The director, Anthony uh, Hickox, hope I'm saying that right. You are. Uh, he directed Hellraiser 3. 
He also did Waxworks Part 2. So uh. Uh, Here's the thing with the Waxworks. By the way, that's at FYE right now for 50% off. I saw it there, too. Yeah. We have a... I have it. I bought it. That was the first FYE thing. around here that's been going out of business, so... Yeah, we we've been, been getting some nice little goodies for you guys. Uh, pillaging it. Found Chopping Mall there. I got uh, Return of Living Dead 3. They've been getting a lot of Vestra and stuff, so... Um, Chud 2, I got... Chud 2, yeah. Got picked up both of the Jeepers Creepers movies the other day. Yeah, Just we stuff can maybe we, do more like more stuff we can do. Yeah. Um, see what else is eighty eight. I'm still going with this. Uh, Return of the Living Dead Part Two. So Waxworks is eighty eight. Yeah, the first one. Do you have any idea how much I love that film? That's great. If you guys have never seen Waxworks, buy Waxworks. Waxworks Two is actually good too. Mm-hmm. Waxworks Two. Uh, they're just they're just good movies. I don't know. I really like them. Yeah, Return of the Living Dead 2 came out in 88. It's actually a decent movie. Um, Sleepaway Camp 2, I don't really care for that, but if you guys enjoy that... It's you know, I would rather watch Part 2 and Part 3 than Part 1. Yeah, Part 1's all set up for the end, really. And, and by the way, you know, we should talk about this real quick since you brought up Sleepaway And uh, Camp. We got rock starred by the star of Sleepaway Camp Part 1. Love Felisa Rose. Don't know what happened with that. We were trying to get something set up. Hopefully, in the near future, we can maybe reconvene. We got rock and man. I don't something. know what happened. We got rock stars. She I started the, doing other stuff, and we got. Rock I think stars. she just got so busy, she doesn't really, you know, do interviews over Skype, or she doesn't have time to do phone stuff. I don't know. We'll we'll get that figured out at a later date uh, for you guys because I know is that Frank and Furter? That'd be something cool. Where? Right there. Right there. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Now right there. Yeah. Now right here. That yeah, the little cool. pop on oil. That's awesome. And uh, let's see. Scarecrows and uh, Serpent in the Rainbow and Monkey Shines, which scared the living fuck out of me when I was a kid. So, Yeah, that's that's pretty good list for 88 we got here. Uh, not a, Not bad at all. There's so much to this movie that's, you know, it's the first Kane Hodder, Hodder film. and It's a short film. This movie's like an yeah. hour and 20 minutes. It would have been way longer if they kept the gore scenes in because there's a, if you all guys the are, gore scenes are like, all they a, did was cut them down so they're not as long. There's a gag long. reel. Or not yeah. a gag reel. There's a, there's a cutting there's room floor thing. On yeah. this. I'm pretty sure it's, it's from the DVD. This. They ported it, you yeah. know. But basically, it shows the side by sides of all the original reels playing, and the and the ones that made it onto the film, and all of them. If you've watched these features, they show the ones that weren't cut, and they were just longer. What they did was they cut wow. out the actual kill happening, like uh, the one where the you know the dude gets his brain squished in the van, like outside of the van. You can see the whole thing. You guys can watch this if you have the DVD or the Blu-ray. It just turns him into a fucking real. grape, and. Uh, you know, on this one, they half it, so it they actually cut it in half to where it's not as gory. You know, it doesn't... I guess the if it's really short, it's okay, but if you prolong something happening, it's considered torture? I don't know. But with this one, considering it's called The New Blood, I guess because of Tina's character, because Tommy Jarvis isn't in it in this one, but... Um, I'm going to grab my it's, it's just uh, not as bloody as it could have been. This could have been... One of, this could have been one of the, the the video the nasties or something. We're talking about the guy that directed the first troll movie. Yeah, John Carl Buechler, yeah. and which is he's actually a fighter fighter at the end, the one that picks the mask. Is up. he? Yeah. Did not know that. Um, well, this had potential to be like probably the best Jason film, but because they cut it down so hard, you know, they it, it just wasn't as good as it could have been, and. Uh, Tina's mom's mullet gets really annoying to look at after a while. And, you know, there's just little subtle things about it that could have made this film better. But in reality, you know, I, I think this is a very tasteful film. I think the uh, the whole telekinetic aspect of it was pretty cool. It adds another supernatural element to this, you know, franchise because, you know, he kind of just kept coming back and nobody really knew why. Until part six, where it's like, oh, you can stab him and lightning will revive him. And now he's got supernatural strength. And they kept up with his 
you know, power and all that in this film and, and so on. So, uh, it's cool they kept that aspect of Jason alive, you know, uh, superhuman strength. I mean, he's like a goddamn vampire, uh, basically. A straight-edge vampire. So, you know, with all that being said, it's it's it was cool to add in a, another supernatural character that's a, you know, a protagonist. I think that's pretty cool. Um, something I always admired about this film is it was very ambitious, and there's a lot of kills in this movie. There's 16 kills. Uh... Not half as much as the <laughs> uh, takes Manhattan, which is, you know, if you have the double feature like I do, that's also on this disc that we're watching. Um, don't remember the body count for takes Manhattan. I want to say it's twenty one. It's it's a lot. There's a lot of kills in that movie. But yeah, this uh, this film made made a lot. It made uh, 19, 19 million roughly, which is not bad at all. Um, not sure if it's one of the weaker movies as far as money made, but I'd have to check on that here in a second. Sorry about that. Oh, you're good. Um, it says, and I'm on IMDb for this one, it says the film was originally intended to bring Jason Voorhees and Freddy Krueger together on screen for the first time. This film? Yeah. Which I guess they, they didn't do it until two movies later and Jason goes to hell when New Line acquired the the films, uh, front, uh, rights or whatever. But it says they couldn't agree behind the scenes and the script was rewritten to pit Jason up against Tina Shepard instead, so... Uh, I guess that's another thing. Instead of getting a mind-bending demon while you're asleep, he gets a mind-bending teenager with a shitty therapist and daddy issues. So I guess that that works in some ways, too. Not really at all like Freddy Krueger, but we'll take it. It it worked out in a lot of ways. So uh, let's see what else... Uh, of course, infamously, with the sleeping bag kill, Kane Hodder wow. had a very hard time with that. Uh, Have I missed the sleeping bag kill? No. He's just now on the prowl, walking around. So, uh, and I, I, was, I remember watching this movie a lot as a kid, and then as an adult. I just haven't really watched it that much. Yeah. I liked it as a kid more, and when I was an adult, I'm more... In, I like. Uh, it's not that I don't... I, I, I like all of them. Well, yeah, yeah I do, but, too. You just cling to other things, I guess, when you get older, you're... You know. You know what we should talk about, I think, for a second. For a I know there's there. a Mr. Skinless with her. Well, we should on. definitely talk about this a second, I think. Because you, you showed me tons of it. I'm very excited about it. Uh, if you guys don't know about this, if you're living under a rock, uh, there's a Friday the 13th video game that's going to come out at some point for PS4 and Xbox One. So we'll see uh, when that actually happens. I have no idea when that fucking thing's coming out. but Right. Uh, Gore Christ here has showed me tons of uh, gameplay footage from it, and it just looks fucking fun. You can play as a counselor and try to run or run from Jason, right? Or you can play as Jason and try to kill everybody. I honestly am more interested in playing as a counselor trying to get away from him because I think it'd be more. I think it'd be scary as hell to have a couple of beers and try to run from his ass. Uh, especially if it's computer generated because you know running from somebody actually playing as Jason to me doesn't sound as scary as if uh, my question here, here's a question I have for you about the game it, can I play it without playing it online I'm not sure honestly or do I have to play it online I honestly have no idea if it's an online only you know I guess it would have to be because you're online with you know somebody that's a side that has Jason and then the other side is the counselor. But, so, but are there? Can you not play it with bots? Is what I'm curious. I'm not sure. Uh, I feel like it'd be an online only game. It seems to be the trend nowadays with movies. Um, there's a nice flashback kill that didn't happen, but it's nice to see them throw something in like that. Um, yeah, I honestly don't know. I'm hoping there's an actual story mode of some kind. Like it's not just some online thing, but I feel like it's just going to be an online mode. 
of some kind. Um, kind of like Left 4 Dead, how you're pitted. You know, you're either the yeah, zombies but Left 4 Dead, or you can play bots, is what I'm saying. That's true. Or the yeah, so maybe. I feel like there's going to be bots for the counselors. Um, I bot, didn't know. That's why I wanted a to A bot Jason is honestly scarier than a human controlling Jason, because, I mean, a bot Jason could be just fucking ruthless. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> I... I I wonder if there's any way we could find that out. I don't know. I I, I was going to ask. I, I don't know why I didn't. I'm why I'm bringing this up right now. and didn't bring it up when we were actually watching footage of the game, but it's just something I was curious about. I don't know. Is my hood bothering him? Probably. Tootie, it's me. It's and of course, got Terry Kaiser in the film, and he's uh, Bernie from Weekend at Bernie's, which I never realized before. That's Terry Kaiser, which. He lasts a lot longer in a slasher film than he does in Weekend at Bernie's. Because in Weekend at Bernie's... He looks he, weird without the facial hair. Yeah, he dies the, <laughs> to begin with. He's a butt in this movie, actually. Yeah, he is a big butt. Just like he is in Weekend at Bernie's. He's a total butt. But yeah, but he's funny. really bad butt in this. Yeah. <laughs> he's super butt. I like how her mom dies in this film. I hate her mom. Her mullet pisses me off. But, I mean, I, it, her kill, her mom's kill in this is actually pretty good. It's Susan Blue. And she's actually as old as my dad, which is where did crazy. they shoot this? This looks like New York, um, or Pennsylvania, or they do it up Jersey. north. I know it looks that. like Jersey or something. I can tell this isn't down south. You could all I could always tell when they were shooting this somewhere up north. If it's not, it's a sound stage. Is what it looks like to me, right? Let's see. I'm going to find something on it. Just bear with me and I'll find it. But here's uh, some little campers. They're going to give Jason back his weapon. Nonchalantly, of course. They're not just going to hand it to him. Although they should have just given it to him. She's gonna get in her. She's gonna get in her birthday suit. Wow. This is a sleeping bag kill, isn't it? No, not yet. Let's see. You guys have to forgive me. I have not watched this film in a really, really long time. Some parts were filmed in Los Angeles. Some films, uh, some were filmed in Alabama, which is weird. That's pretty interesting. And of course, this guy's going to get some fire. It was filmed in Alabama? Parts of it were, yeah. Oh, so it was filmed down south. Mm-hmm. Stockton, Alabama. And Baldwin County, Alabama. That's pretty crazy. And he got the fucking axe, so... Now he just became Firewood. Now we're going to, uh... His widow that he left in in the tent by herself. It's a bad idea when you got a psychopathic... Supernatural killer on the loose. What the hell just happened? And I always love this kill, I don't know. This is the sleeping bag kill. But say I thought it was. Yeah. We'll go ahead because this isn't a Mr. Skinless, but about 27 minutes, 40, se- 40 seconds, you get one of the best kills in all of horror. And it's probably Kane Hodder's favorite, but also least favorite because you can see how bad he's struggling with the sleeping bag already because it was just filled with. Uh, that has to be a person right there. Yeah, right there. And then when he starts smacking it, it's filled with, like, blood packs. But if you watch the uh, the cutting room version, he does it about four or five times to where he gets so tired that he throws it down because he's actually genuinely, genuinely pissed off that he had, you know, that it was so heavy. Because he had to, like, make sure the blood packs inside busted and, you know... You just see it dripping out of the bottom. It's pretty gruesome. But, uh, yeah, I, I wish they could have made a, a director's cut of this film or an underrated version. I mean, it would have been, you know, I 
Don't know if they can make that happen now. The, the reels that they show for the cutting room versions, uh, it looks pretty rough. I hate Fandango's app. Yeah. They're constantly fucking with it. Well, what do you think? Do you think those are too rough to clear up? What's that? Because they should have, they obviously have the original film. Now that footage looks rough. Yeah. It looks about as rough as that stuff from, uh, I don't know, it's just one thing that'll never happen is get a, get a direct... I want to talk about this real quick. It's gone already, too. Went and saw Incarnate the other day. Which one is that one? It's a horror movie with the guy that played Two-Face in The Dark Knight Rises. Or Dark Knight. Oh, uh... Aaron Eckhart. Harvey Dent. Aaron yeah. Eckhart. <laughs> He's a, he is a guy that goes in when someone's possessed and he enters their... Brain. Oh yeah, so he's like a Constantine. It was really good. Was it? Yeah, he's like a Constantine character, or like the Cell or something. If you like B horror movies, it's it's pretty damn good. And it came out in December. So it's actually has it got gore? Or is it just kind of freaky? Or it's a PG thirteen thing. It's it's the people that did the Purge and some of the folks oh. that did the Conjuring were involved with it. Typical. Well, but they, I they, liked it. They've been getting better as they've gone. I actually so. thought it was pretty good. Um, God damn it. Sorry, I'm trying to look something up here. I was being asked to look it up. Let's see here. And we'll do a uh while I'm on the subject of the possible or not possible director's cut it said uh, John had publicly fumed many times over the years about the number of edits required by the MPAA to avoid an X rating the film had to be submitted nine times to the MPAA before being granted an R rating and it stands as arguably the most heavily censored entry in the Friday 13th series sure it is you can tell it is but if you watch the the edits there Ten times better. It makes you can tell that it's been chopped and screwed because, especially the kill with the when they kill the therapist, Doctor Cruz, with the tree trimmer, that is so satisfying in the original version because you watch the blade go through him and shit. You know, in, in this version, they just kind of he just kind of makes like a you know a face or whatever. Like Jason kind of I don't know. It's Especially with him getting killed because he's such a rump. You know, you want him to die the way that it was intended. And it's just kind of disheartening to know that we'll never see, like, a full version of this film the way that it was supposed to be. Um, But if they released it now, then it would have been fine, you know, because they could have just put it out on Blu-ray and made it unrated, you know. But being as it was 88, they just didn't really have... The market to put out an unrated cut, um, you know, for home release. So, that's crazy. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, Kane Hodder had to eat worms so he could get the role of Jason, which is pretty impressive, because I wouldn't have done that. That's what Bugler had him do? Yeah. <clears throat> and uh, C.J. Graham, who was the Jason in Part 6, was originally going to be the Jason in this film. They were going to keep him for another movie, but since Kane Hodder... I guess did that. They gave it to him. Because he showed he was worthy by eating the worms. And I didn't ever knew that. That's crazy. And John Carl Buechler was pushing the studio over and over to get them to cast him as Jason because I guess without his persistence... That kind of sucks, though, as much as you like C.J. Graham that they didn't get him in one more film. Yeah. I'd say they probably don't like each other. 
Oh, I don't know. I don't think he was. I think that's just who John was uh, considering before Kane Hodder did that. Um, there never well, was, never except get. for Kane. There was never any consistency for Jason. I guess once they found CJ, they were pretty happy with his performance because once he was in the film, they kind of changed pace with the way that Jason well, sure. reacted and all that because he's Heaven. a he's a big mother and that you know he still is. Um, which you know, Kane Hodder gets all the credit in the world for revamping Jason's uh, style and attitude, but honestly, I think CJ is the one who started it. Um, the way Jason moves around and. And, uh, you know, he's not just some hulking super. See, I would, go back to, I would go back on that and say Ted White. He had his own style, I think. Uh, well, if you watch, <clears throat> get with me on this. If you watch part four, which we had, if you watch part four, in part four, Ted is going really fast when he walks. Right. In three, he definitely didn't do that. No, he was more just kind of oh. standing around. Um, as much as I like three as a film. But Ted made him fast. And then CJ made him even faster. So. Right. And I don't remember the, the Jason in part five being that fast. He was not really... No, because, I mean... Ted, he, Ted. all I'm saying, Ted kind of... I think Ted's kind of the blueprint for where... And, and they can say that they didn't, but I, I think CJ and... and Especially Kane. I feel like Kane stole a lot of the way that he walks from Ted. Right. Because Ted is, like, hulking, pissed off fast in that film. And you can tell he's trying to hurt him when he's throwing him. Right. And the I don't think Kane really... Stole, but I think he kind of no. I, I he, think he did. I think he watched part four, and he was like, "I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this fast, Jason, and I'm gonna put my own twist on it." Well, yeah, I think he wanted to. But I think CJ did too. From His CJ was fast. The there there was absorb, nothing fast. Absorb features from all the Jasons. I don't remember the thing. Jason in part five being that fast. No, they were in that house the whole time, so he didn't really have to be. He was just going room to room, you know, hacking people up. So there wasn't really like a forest. And it wasn't Jason, so. Yeah, and it was Jason. It was an imposter, so. Now we might finally see... Imagine some. Jim's with that guy's haircut. Oh, yeah, I can. Hey, you got some butt. We got it, uh... 3640, guys. Mr. Skinless is endless. <laughs> Except for this fucking dude, I don't know. But you got some bare butt and side boobs, so you're welcome. <laughs> She's ugly as sin too. She got a. She needs to go. Yeah, she's a troll. Yeah, she's got to go. He's like, I'm gonna take off my sweater. Imagine Jen's with his haircut though. <clears throat> I don't know. The the Jason looks pretty awesome in this, but I I like the look of him better when I was a kid. Um, he's too zombified for me. I think he looks like Tar Man, honestly. Um, I agree with you. Was Tar Man? See, I love that kill. It was like a CJ's Jason was like the last good looking Jason. Yeah, look at that. I love that face gap. He did like a a bowling maneuver to like smash his fucking head into a vagina. It looked great. And we're still on Mr. Skinless. So you got the Jaws uh, upshot right here. The, the up butt. And you can pretty much see her vagina. That's about to get sliced in half too. She just gets pulled to the unknown because now Jason can swim. Now that he's dead, so I guess you kind of lose fear of uh, drowning when you're already dead. So um, let's see. This uh, this explains some of the the edits. In case you guys have never watched the Tales from the Cutting Room Floor stuff, what the hell was that? But uh, it says there was numerous film scenes that were edited out of the final cut in order for the movie to gain its R rating, which we already know, including 
Maddie's face getting stabbed in the woodshed. Dr. Cruz's body being cut into in the woods. Uh, a longer death than the sleeping bag scene, which we talked about earlier. Uh, Russell's axe in the face by the lake, which is the one we just saw, if you guys were watching. Uh, they do show the face gap, uh, you know, after the fact, but you actually, I guess, see his face get sliced in two. Uh, and the ending scene of Jason jumping out of the water and grabbing a fisherman. So that wasn't even in there, because we didn't even get that ending. No. Uh, which sucks. And here's a good piece of trivia. Let's see. Jason's mask in this film was cast from the same mold as the original mask from Friday the 13th Part 3, which was 1982, respectively, but was modified slightly in addition to the damage seen in the mask, the axe cut and propeller damage. The edges of the mask have been trimmed to make it smaller to allow more of actor Kane Hodder's head to be seen around the mask, which is pretty cool. I didn't know that. What's that? The part where Jack Kane Hodder gets set on fire. Uh, it says this film, it set a record for the longest uninterrupted on screen controlled burn in Hollywood history. It still holds it? I think so. Kane. Kane Hodder stayed on fire for a record setting 40 seconds. So he was like on fire in that film. Like, it's. <clears throat> in this film? Yeah. That's insane. Is that the end? I think so, yeah. yeah well, I remember, that, didn't, her, didn't her dad kind of... Uh, here you go, spoiler alert. Didn't her dad, like, <laughs> that's fly up out of the water and, like... But he gets burned. He's like, he's like here I come, I'm 1970s man. He's like, yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Get away from my daughter. Here's a chastity belt. <laughs> no, but, uh... <laughs> I think he gets sent on fire belt. because she has... <laughs> <laughs> She, <laughs> Tina like blows up some like light on the ceiling and then the fixture like the wire comes down and like wraps around him or whatever and I think after that they like dump him in that hole that where the stairs were and then I think they set the house on fire or something that happens I don't remember um, it's interesting yeah let's see original writer Daryl Haney was sacked I like how they use the word sacked was sacked after his agent contacted uh, executive producer Frank Mancuso Jr. and told him that Haney would not do any more work on the project unless he received a large pay increase. Even though Haney had never told his agent to do any Is Haney thing. in this film? No, he was a writer, original writer. Oh. The screenplay was completed by a second unknown writer who was credited as Manuel Fidello. Or Fidio. I don't know. I'm not bilingual or smart so this is pretty funny according to the documentary Crystal Lake Memories uh, the complete history of Friday the 13th from 2013 Daryl Haney's original script was titled Friday the 13th part 6 it must be part 7 I don't know uh, Jason's Destroyer which I'm glad that didn't happen because that sounds really fucking stupid. Well, just to talk about this real quick, this is something, because you love this film, this is something that I'm still bothered by. I'm so mad that in part six they didn't introduce Jason's dad like they were supposed to have. Yeah, I mean, it would have been a cool addition to the franchise, you know, something that's never really answered, but... And also, no, I want to say one other thing about part six. That's the last good Alice Cooper song ever written. Was it was. That, was he's back and uh, it's such a great Teenage Frankenstein. All know, that so. stuff off that same album, off Constrictor. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's a cool that's and a, hard rock summer. Yeah, you that's guys. Uh, it's cool you bring that up about the father because honestly, I think why didn't they do that? I think it's kind of a good thing because it leaves speculation because maybe the. Uh, you know, I mean, I th- I'd like to think that. Uh, well, today, you know, people are probably like, "Why are you jumping around?" It's Friday the Thirteenth. We can jump around and talk about whatever. Well, maybe Pamela was a whore and she hated that those kids. What can whores. you tell us about that new film? Nothing. What I'm do you mean? Not, it's supposed to be out this I year. I just know it's going to be called Part Two. Huh? Because it's a it's a uh, sequel to the one they did in '09. It is I'm pretty sure because it's still the same people doing it. Look it up. Uh, I think Derek Mears is still doing it. Well, let's find out. 
Corey's looking it up for you guys. We're going to find oh, here's, right here's now the, uh, any on the Corey movie database. Wow. The well, Paramount, Paramount fucked all our all our hopes and dreams in the ass. It says any hopes of a complete uncut version of the film being released were dashed when it was revealed that the footage no longer exists as Paramount destroyed all the outtakes. You know Bugler has some of that stuff. I don't know. I bet he does. Whatever they had left. Because here's the thing, back then, you've got cans of film and you know he fucking just ran off with it. What can you tell us about the new film? Let's see. He's looking it up. If you guys need any horror news, check out the Corey movie database. (laughs) It's CMDB. It's way better than IMDB. That's the CG. All I have to do is ask, and then I find out. He tells me it's better than that little talking Amazon thing or the... Those, those little bots you buy it's way better um, Corey's dog Tootie actually has one of those Amazon things planted in his butt because he ate it <laughs> and it won't come out yeah it's supposed to come out Friday the 13th like this is the first one of two Friday the 13th this one's one of them the next one's sometime in the summer um, I thought it was in October yeah that's the next one Let's see. So you guys are going to get a Friday the 13th, which you're getting right now, and then later you'll get Friday the 13th Part 2, possibly for me and Corey. If well, I'm according dead. to this, it just says Friday the 13th. Um, supposed to come out... I wasn't fucking saying anything. See, Breck Eisner is set to direct the film. I'm trying to see what... I mean, is it, this thing should be in the can if it's coming out in October, shouldn't it? Well, they definitely haven't filmed it yet or even cast it for it, so... No Friday the 13th film, kids. It was all horseshit. Let's see, we got Breck Eisner directing it, who directed the Crazies remake. Terrible film. Yep, and... So the original's great. The Last Witch Hunter. Oh, God, that Last Witch Hunter movie is... I've never seen The it. worst piece of dog shit I've ever had to sit through. It looked awful anyway, I don't even... All it is, all it is is... Fast and the Witch Hunteress. Yeah. That's all it is. It's a Vin Diesel turd. <laughs> I can deal with Vin Diesel in small doses. Yeah. But overall, he's annoying. The group character is annoying, too. I don't know. I always want to have sex with that nerd chick. I don't know why. I think she's wearing pee hose <laughs> walking around. She's like, will somebody tear the butt out of these? I'm like, yeah, I will. <laughs> Do you know what I always wanted to show back up in all these films? Like, literally from four forward. I just, I don't know where I just want, no way, Aaron no. Fennelar. <laughs> and <laughs> you, you have. <laughs> I mean, there's nothing about this film. It's not happening, kids. No Friday the 13th film. It'll it's be all the, horseshit. They need to do this one right. There's a lot of studio pressure to make this because it'll be the 13th. Uh, Friday the 13th film so um, it says Brad Fuller expressed interest on exploring the reason as to why Jason can keep coming back to life after he is killed no I don't, need, I don't need that explained That's I'm tired of people point. wanting to put their, well, their they, dork they, twist on something that I enjoy well, they also overanalyze things thank and, you you know same thing with Halloween it's like I don't need to know what happened to him as a child or what Uncle touched Shove him in his bum Shove your dick bomb. up but want to fear some more in Bob Reynolds. <laughs> Do you know what I'm There's doing? There's stuff you... that makes them, you know, like John Carpenter said, uh, Michael Myers is a force of nature. So is Jason. He's ridding the world of uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it, party it's... teenagers. And there's the vag face that just got dropped from the Yeah, that's tree. pretty nasty. Yeah. And he just peeks over like, hey. All right, I got a surprise for everybody today. What's that? Give me one second. It's going to take a minute. I can't do it immediately, but I will find it. He gives me a surprise and then makes me wait. That's how the doctor likes to do it. I do. Keep you waiting. She better get the fuck out of there. This is the worst place you can possibly hide is a a barn, like a shed full of tools that you're not going to use to get yourself out. It's real nice, so... So this is Maddie, is the character. I never knew her name. I don't think anyone even says it. So, 
<clears throat> well, she's actually 50 now. Her birthday is January 23rd, so... Who? Uh, Diana Barrows, who is about to die in this film. So, uh, probably won't have another episode until after this, maybe. But if not, happy birthday, Diana Barrows. And, uh, yeah, thanks for the, the awesome kill here that we're about to see. Because I love her face in this whenever, uh... She just hides with her heels in her hand. I wouldn't even... <laughs> it's just so funny. Sorry, it's just a little bit more effort than I thought it was going to be. And Jason's got a fucking sickle on this part. But her face, whenever he just kind of explodes behind her, it's so funny. I'll tell you another thing funny. Here we go. Look at that. The face is perfect. And there you go, another another chopping block scene. <clears throat> All right, it's Friday the 13th. And um, it's time for the song that makes me always think about that. This is so wrong on about a hundred different levels. You know, it's funny when you look up uh, William Butler, Michael's character, or, you know, the actor... That's not that plays- what I wanted. The actor that plays Michael... No, that is it, too. The actor that plays Michael William Butler in this film, who's infamous from dying in a ton of films, also directed uh, Ginger Deadman. It's a Christian Blood <laughs> dance song. Who is that? that song? It's a band called Lion... <laughs> they did some songs for the uh, 86 Transformers movies. It's so horrible, it's awesome. <laughs> uh, I was trying to say this is funny. When you look up Wo- play. When you look up William Butler, who plays Michael in this film, the picture is of Gerard Butler that comes up. <laughs> See, look. Because that's William Butler. <laughs> and then look when I look at the when you look him up on Google, it's Gerard Butler. <laughs> so William Butler, if you ever listen to this, uh, you are really Gerard Butler, and we just found out who you, who you really are. So. Yeah. And this is fitting perfectly because they're just having a, having ebony sex in here. It sounds like bad porn music. It's Crispin Glover porn music. <laughs> no do audio for this scene now. This actually sounds good, whoever got this clip of it. Yeah. It's the whole song. It's funny. Here we go. Of course, they're looking for their friend Michael. That are that is That's William amazing. Butler. That already died. I can't believe I found that that easy tonight. All right, that's so bad. Don't ask Toodle to stay. Oh, I'm sorry. That song's awesome. I love his kill. He turns him into a fucking grape. It's hilarious. But of course, his scene gets cut. That should be our intro music if we ever did it somewhere. We walk, yeah. you and I walk out. It's like, don't ask oh. for it, stay <laughs> tonight. All right, <laughs> that's so awful. <laughs> Tootie can't take it anymore. Aren't falling so Of course, that kill, <laughs> kill you just saw. Ben. ben, black people have no business in the woods. You're gonna get killed. Yeah. You know, I feel bad, but it's just the truth. It's like Juana man getting killed in that toilet. Yeah, part five. Yeah, you're, you're getting killed. And she gets kazooed in the eyeball. That's pretty funny. She gets my favorite kill in the whole movie. Uh, now, not now, but when I watched this, she was the one, because she's so mean. Yeah, Melissa, that's what her name is. In yeah, the I always film. want her to let me get some. Oh, you wanted to 
Give her a, a clear I don't know standard. why, because I look at it now, she's kind of, uh, but when I was a kid, I wanted to pork her. I don't know why. Don't ask the doctor to explain. Now, Susan Sullivan. <laughs> Tonight. <laughs> All right. That song is so bad. My name is Susan Sullivan, and this is uh, Phantasm Graveyard. And she she died in 2009. She didn't even get to see Jesus. that. Jesus. She didn't even get to see that shitty remake they did. She's dead. Yep. How? Does it say? Hopefully not the same way she dies in this movie. Does it that's say? Horrifying. Uh, no, it just said died, so I don't know how. That's pretty crazy. Yeah, you know, it makes you wonder, I wonder, and this would be a huge undertaking. Well, some more Mr. How many, for you guys. How and, uh, many, how many not epic. people are still alive that were in these films? 54 or 30, you guys, you got another Mr. Skinless update for you. And Jason's about to... Oh, here's something weird I want to talk about on the, about this film. Off. This is something huge we need to talk about. The the love interest in this film, he's gay. Who? The love interest in this film is gay. Oh, um... What the hell is his name? It's just interesting to me. I have no... I don't care. It's just... It's interesting to me that he is like... Him. That guy is flaming yeah. gay. <laughs> I mean, that makes perfect sense, honestly. But That's cool. Well, I mean, I don't think he was out of the closet when they casted him, either. Because the only reason I know this is on one of those Jason documentaries, that one you mentioned earlier, or the it's Kevin Spiritus. He he come he, he was just like yeah like I he goes I don't know if you can tell it in the film like because you because <laughs> he, he kind of looks like a Christopher Reeve stunt double. Yeah. Do you see that at all? He was in uh, the Hills of Eyes Part Two. Yep. Yes, he was. Hmm. He apparently has an album, like a. He's an easy listening musician. I just thought it was weird that he's gay. I mean, I don't care. I just thought it was strange. Hmm. And he was raised Jewish, and he's openly gay. Yep. He's he feeding that sense. circumcised wiener to <laughs> somebody's hungry butthole. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good way to explain it, yeah. Yeah, it's... Uh, <laughs> I, don't, I don't have anything else Fire to 13, say. Part that. 7, The Hungry Butt Hole. <laughs> the <laughs> new butt. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's fun. It's just... That's the best thing I'll hear all day. Maybe all week. I'll see how the rest of this day goes. But. You enjoyed that. <laughs> yeah, that was good. Wouldn't it be interesting? It would be interesting if they did like a uh, 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 male review remake of this film where it's Jason and he pummels him in the end. That's the climactic part. He tears the ass out of his jeans and <laughs> feeds his zombie dog in like, his hungry my butt all. birthday. He didn't show up. <laughs> I got a present. I'll just give it to you. He puts it... It's got worms coming out of the tip. Oh. <laughs> well, this guy's about to get it. He's about to get some... Uh... He gives him his <laughs> He gives him his worm loaf. <laughs> <laughs> but this is his last... Uh, his <laughs> last drink of milk here. He's like, I'm going to spare you with my, my worm pus wiener. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you get for eating bologna, you fuck. <laughs> You see when it even does a close-up of the worm coming out of his pee hole. Yeah. He kind of looks gay, though, because he looks like he's about to cry the whole movie. He's, he's very emotional. Well, it, what, what I think is funny, but I don't know if anybody's ever noticed this watching this, it constantly looks like he's in wardrobe because every other scene, his hair looks perfect. He's got that jacket that looks like it's got shit on it. Yeah. And he's got he's wearing a sweater, too, but... I mean, all people wearing sweaters. Well, it's weird. Like, I never thought about it as a kid. I, I just thought it was just this guy running around. But if you watch it now, it's hard not to. Yeah. It's hard not to know that he wants Jason inside him. That's why in the movie they kill all the dudes off first. So He wants Jason's pole. Yeah. He wants his machete meat. He wants all his various tools. <laughs> He wants him. He, to, wants, one he wants him to empty his zombie sack of his hungry butthole. <laughs> 
his worm infested pus sack into his <laughs> into his hungry anus. <laughs> His welcoming. Into his hair mat. <laughs> oh, God. But uh, He's going to gape it for Jason. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, gape for Jason. And then we could even make it sicker where Jason wants the, the service return. He tears the butt out of his zombie pants and makes him <laughs> eat his makes him eat his leech filled anus. <laughs> yeah, that's gotta be a trouble. His lake sewered butt. <laughs> his seaweed. His algae riddle. <laughs> he's like, crack. He's like, here, tongue fuck my zombie shitter. <laughs> <laughs> Been all over the world, apparently. I'm back. Oh God! I like how this guy is like the—he looks like Corey Feldman, but he's not. But he's just like the political asshole nobody wanted to hang out with. But he got a penis enlarger, so that's cool. Okay, this is really Which funny. Is I don't know why this is fun to do in these films. Imagine that guy when it shows him again with the. Jason's about to find him. It's like nice magnifying glass. He's like, will you be my friend? He's like, I tried on your heels. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have done it. It was stupid. (laughs) Wouldn't it be funny if he was the last one to survive and he's running around the woods in just a jock strap? (laughs) (laughs) He's running around, Jason, hell. (laughs) Oh, I fail. Oh. I hope I can get up in time. <laughs> I fell with my legs over my head, Jackson. <laughs> I shouldn't be that way about it, but it's funny. Oh, whatever. When he when he did that, it was just wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Kane Hodder didn't know it. He was the first PC Jason because yeah. he had a, a gay co-star. <laughs> <laughs> There's some more for you. Yeah, that girl, you know what's weird is I didn't really think she was that attractive until I saw her tits. <laughs> and it was like, your headlights are impressive. I'd like to catch you from behind. <laughs> but I'm telling you, the nerd girl in the pantyhose did it for me. I don't know why. It's weird. Okay. Watching this again, it was, you know. I thought she looked like Porky Pig. but She does. But for pig. some reason, <laughs> some reason I wanted to. I, it's awful, but I just, I don't know why. No, you're right. She's a troll, and I wanted to plow it. I don't know. I don't have an explanation for it. Same with that girl. That girl has like a horse face. But yeah. She's like, oh my god. <laughs> she's like, Wee. but after I saw her headlights, I was like, well, she's still calling for. Matt. There is no hot women in this film, really, except the one that's dead. No. Which that's just strange. I mean, she's been dead for almost ten years. That's pretty morbid. It is. If you think about it, it really is. Of course, I don't know how I'll look up. Uh, it's just crazy. Tootie looks like he's posing for like glamour shots. Do you remember glamour shots at the mall? You go pay a million dollars and they take your pictures. Oh, Tootie. Oh no. Apparently, she's not dead. Okay, she's not dead. I don't know. It says... There's a recap. Let's see. You know, I'd never noticed that before. There's two different types of marijuana smoking devices there. Look at that fake marijuana. Yeah, it looks like pipe. grass outside. It looks like oregano. Yeah. <laughs> Did y'all make spaghetti earlier and then smoked it? Yeah. <laughs> Top ramen. <laughs> <laughs> My friend is the best. Let's see. As you probably know, Jenner, this is from some blog thing, forum. Susan Jennifer Sullivan was reported dead by the Crystal Lake Memories documentary in 2012. They presented a link to an obituary to Susan Jennifer Sullivan, who died in Boston in 2009, uh. and later restated that claim on the DVD and put her name up in the in-memory credits. 
You also might know that there is a website about a Susan Jennifer Grace Sullivan that deals with a woman that suffered from leukemia, and you might also know that a girl, Mia, posted on some Friday the 13th message boards who claimed to be her daughter and said that our Susan Jennifer Sutherland from the New Blood is still alive. And unfortunately, a lot of people never believed her because the DVD said she was dead. Uh, so she's not dead. This person said, I have done a bit of investigating. Mia, Mia and her story are legit. This is from... can't read. So she's not dead. I don't know who this person is that put this. Susan Jennifer Sutherland's alternate name is Grace Sullivan. I think she appeared under that name in some movies, but is also hinted on IMDb. She was married. Ooh, that's a nice headshot. <laughs> Hang on, we'll wait till this kill to finish, because this kill's pretty awesome. She's like, I'm so high. And this is the... I don't know if they did this kill on purpose for her, for the stoner to go out on the high rise, but there you go. Nice. But do you know what? You know Hang what? On, that, we're going to get some audio for the fall. But do you know, but that kill, that kill's not a. Do you know what tops that kill? The the the, the, the Susan one does. The, no, I think no, it's the no. Here's one. the best kill. Period. In my opinion, of any of these films, no. Oh, I, I thought you were talking about this film. The Ted White out the window with the double mint twin, and she hits that car and's like. Nah. Yeah, that one's really good. That is vulgar. Okay, she was... We're back to the Susan Jennifer Sullivan. She was And for your C.J. Graham, my favorite was the face through the back of the camper. That one was awesome. It's brutal. Uh, my favorite's probably the backbreaker that he does to the cop. That one's pretty awesome. She was married to Andrew Nicoli, director of Gattaca and screenwriter of The Truman Show, whatever. But they are divorced, and he is married... So to she's alive. Rachel Roberts afterwards. They have a daughter, and that's who Mia is. Andrew Nicoli's wiki, where Mia, from his first marriage, is mentioned. Uh, let's see. I got this info from Facebook comments made by her doctor. Check the comments, whatever. Here are some pics of SJS and Andrew Nicoli from the premiere of Simone in 2002. You compare the nose, cheek, and chin, or whatever. Um... <clears throat> I can't really tell what they're trying Good night, to show. round, 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 The obituary of the guys in the Crystal Ray Chronicles gave said that Susan Jennifer Sullivan died in 2009. If that was her then, it must have been moved to Boston and married Ed K. Taylor sometime after 2002. That obituary says nothing about her First marriage as well as the daughter of me, our former acting career. <clears throat> See, unfortunately, the woman from the obituary will be forever linked to our Melissa, since people on Find a Grave are making comments about her, the real, still living Susan Jennifer Sullivan. So she is alive, or she's dead, <clears throat> or nobody knows. Oh no, this one's all speculation, but. It's very interesting to me that they would just say, hey, you're dead. Let's and, see. And then she's not dead. What happens when you look her up on Internet Movie Database? Let's see. Like this film, I'm assuming. I don't know if she did anything else or not. But. Okay. So this person found her mother on Facebook. Okay. She said, I contacted her mother and asked her if her daughter was an actress and she started Friday the 13th, Part 7. I asked if she was aware of the death news. Today I got the response. Alive and well. It says, I asked if she was aware of the internet rumors and if the media or former co-stars tried to contact her. Will I get an answer to that? I don't know. In closing, be happy. Watch Friday the 13th. Spread the word that she is still alive. If I get more responses, I'll let you know. So she's not so dead. So she's not dead, apparently. Do you think somebody hated her and they're like, yeah, we're just going to tell people she's dead? No, there was another person with the same name, I guess, that was... Because she's from Boston, I'm pretty sure, that died with her name. So, so I, she's a lot. I guess they assumed it was her. Which is pretty crazy. Yeah, I'll check what Internet Movie Database says. 
But in this movie, she she has my favorite kill in this film. It's, it's hilarious. Yeah, it doesn't say... On the internet movie database, it doesn't say she's dead at all. And they always do. It just says born, whatever. You were eating. It's not like you said internet mooning metamase. <laughs> yeah, so on, on here, it doesn't say she's dead at all. So, so this film was shot in Alabama or on a soundstage? Alabama. I mean, her career was dead. Your favorite movie was shot in Georgia. All right. I've been there. Part six. I went. Yes, I went there and got in the lake and smoked a J. It's awesome. Well, you were saying we needed to go there. Yes. It's a summer camp. They have like, I mean, you can go hang out in that town. There's nothing there. So yeah, she's totally still alive, Melissa. I don't know how she hasn't heard about any of this. Or it's amazing is what it is. Came back into the light and being like, hey, motherfuckers. If we have any toy collectors out there, I wanted to tell everybody that they... they I just thought this was cool because I saw it the other day at Toys R Us. They made a Chop Top figure. Really? Yes. I just thought it was cool. If y'all don't know who that is, that's Bill Mosley from uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre Part 2. They made a figure of him. It's really weird. Once in a few weeks, I'm happy to say I will be going... Oh, I love this tree trimmer. It's fucking awesome. It just sucks that that's not in the film, the version that you see where he's cut in half. Because he's the one that gets the worst. This would have been my favorite kill had it not been for the. So I thought cuts. her mom got a pretty good kill. Yeah. Well, yeah, he. <laughs> Bernie uses her as a fucking meat shield on Jason. He, like, does a. Cane Which film is it where they do the. Is it part six where he does the face plant into the tree? Yeah, because he pulls it out and it's a smiley face. That's where he gets the machete. He also rips off the dude's arm. Like, yeah, seeing that. He, you can tell it's been cut because it's just so short. God, the MPAA had a field day with this, didn't they? Yeah. But it sucks because, like I said, you know, nowadays they could have just... The home release could have been the director's cut. And we could have had a the version that John Carl Buechler intended us to watch at home. You know? I, I didn't even see her mom get killed. What the hell was she I get, doing? She gets used as a meat shield. I don't I, know. Um... I guess what we're talking, I don't know. Whatever. Yeah, so Melissa in the film is not... I mean, she will die in this film. But she's not dead in real life. Don't forget, we got uh, Sam of Condemned coming up on the show. He's awesome. Uh, great yeah, job. the Doctor had a great interview with him. Uh, it's just a standalone for the Doctor, a really long one. So you guys definitely stay tuned, and, and we got that coming up for you. And I always loved how Jason just kind of props the bodies up for everyone to find him. It's just a, a nudie. Yeah, so we don't got much of this left. You know, we're about to see the <laughs> little booby trap bodies. That's the third time we've seen him. Yeah, the badge face. With the badge face, yeah. He's about to. Jason's about to face his. Uh, you know, that's something else I don't like about this film. You can tell it's cold when they shot it, and that's kind of lame. Yeah, it's not like summertime. Because I always think these should be like a summer film. It's not a fall film to me. Right. Well, the setting for this movie is supposed to be in October uh, 13th. I know. I don't like that, though. I don't I don't understand why he did that. Yeah. Which I guess, you know... It's... I mean, for God's sakes, the, the New York one looks warmer than this one. It's just, <laughs> it's just yeah. weird to me. Even though, from what you were telling me, I guess that movie should be appropriately titled uh, Jason Takes Toronto. Yeah. Because <laughs> it's Canadian, isn't that what we found out? Yeah. You know, and I, I hope I'm not the only person that feels this way. I think Freddy versus Jason is awful. 
I tried watching that recently. It's absolutely horrible. Jason Goes to Hell is a horrible film. Jason X is a horrible film. And I remember meeting people all the time. Those are great movies. I mean, you must have grew up with them because I have no good memories of those. Those movies. are like uh, grocery store movies that you bought. <laughs> they're just they're store. horrible. <laughs> they're really those are bad. horrible films. <clears throat> And then, and then these same people defend those films to me, but they don't like the last film, which I love, the one from '09. I like the last film. It kind of, you know, considering we had it's a better than Jason X. Jason yeah, goes to hell. Considering Freddy we had a Jason. drought, it's the best one in a long time because you would think in 1990 until 2000. Because there's some good kills in that man. That thing with that shit getting hit with that boat. Yeah, that was pretty awesome. And then him, I mean, it's just brutal. And that, and that that redneck that was jerking off, getting stoned when he kills that guy, that was awesome. There's some good stuff in that movie. That's when he gets the mask back, I think. And I swear to you, the guy from Supernatural that's in that film, mm-hmm. I can't think of his name. I swear to you, he that he is a rip off character of the guy from Part Four that's yeah. looking for his sister. I swear it's the same thing. They kind of, you know. And it's fine. It's not a bad thing. It's like they just threw a ton of good parts out of all the films in that film. It was like the greatest hits. Yeah. It played off nicely. But I like that movie. I think it gets a bad rap. It's really good. I got my ID just to go see that movie so I can get into it. It's good. I just turned 18. uh, That's the last movie that I paid to see in RPX. Huh. And it was a waste of money. The only thing I saw in RPX was, uh, I think, one of the, the Ghostbusters movie. You know, the, not the new one. Like the the first time we saw it, I think it was RPX. It was pretty sure. Okay. All it is, it's just a bigger screen. It's like the IMAX size screen, but it's not IMAX. I think it's the RP stands for rip off. Yeah, rip off X. X meaning you don't have any more money. <clears throat> one thing you don't want to ever see a movie in, and they don't really do this too often. Weird. That head was on a potted plant. I love that. He kind of headbutts him. It's funny. Um, yeah, one thing you don't want to watch is high frame rate movies. I got, I had to get stuck seeing a movie in high frame rate because they do they still have those? Not usually, but they do it once in a while. Like I don't know for certain movies. I guess if oh, that was them, nice. I guess if they have that roof almost killed them in the in real life. Really, the roof falling. Yeah. So he he dodged a couple of bullets in this film doing all the stunts. So it fucked him up for real. It almost did. It didn't, but apparently... God, I mean, it's rock crude looking, isn't yeah. it? It's just like, ugh. <laughs> and then in that scene where he falls through the stairs, uh, one of those stairs, one of the, like, the wood pieces coming out of it almost. I know Ted almost died, literally, but broke his neck yeah. in one of the house scenes where the stairs fell with him. You can see it on screen, like he... Or am I... Th- no, it is that one. Because mm-hmm. he, he falls weird. Yeah. Now, you're right. Something happens to him here, too, where he falls through some stairs or something and damn near breaks his neck, too, doesn't he? He almost gets pierced with the one of the... I think it just misses his head or something. One of the uh, pieces of wood. Here's my favorite kill right here. <laughs> Don't go out there. Fuck you. Here's our girl, Melissa. This is my favorite kill. One of my favorite kills in all the films is this one. It's just so brutal. It's funny. <laughs> hey, that's not over. <laughs> it throws her through a fucking lamp. <laughs> Uses her as a fucking target. Hatch it to the head. Hatch it to the head. It's fucking hysterical. <laughs> wonder if that's what that's from. And now we're down Nine. to... Yeah, maybe... For those and of, of course, we're obsessed, kids. It's like a, a a fine, you know, you gotta pair up your wine with the meal. So, the doctor instead will pair up a, a song with a with a kill. We'll do "Hatch to the Head" by Cannibal Corpse. I love that record. It is great. That's honestly my favorite uh, George record. Is Score Obsessed? It's nasty. They were in like drop A tuning in that record. I mean, they just went full on. Uh, a term the doctor recently coined is turd burger. Yeah. Which is, you know, just that part right here. There's a beam. It looked like he about broke his neck. There's a beam that almost like it went right near his face or his head and could have potentially gone through his face. Or Why something. is that guy wearing cowboy boots? <clears throat> I think we know the answer to that. I should have even brought that up. He's a cock wild. wrangler. <laughs> He's a cock boy. Yeah. Dallas cock boy. <laughs> Now look, we're not insensitive here on Phantasm Podcast. We just like to have a good time. Uh, you know, 
I don't care who's pork and who. That doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't bother, bother me. me. I could care less. It's just. Hard. I actually think it'd be funny if he came out and Kane was a big homo. It's just in these. He's films. a big homo butch. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's just in you know in the eighties and you know that wasn't a big deal. And just just for just to go on record here too, Kane Hodder was a complete rectum when I met him. <laughs> he was. He was just a. He was a butt. Yeah. He was not nice. And I I don't know. I just wasn't impressed. Yeah, apparently. Uh, and I was told I was told this is by a CJ Graham fan that I knew that used to work at Target. This is really weird. This is a true story. God didn't live here anymore. He moved away, but a friend of mine, and he told me that he's like Kane Hodder's a pill head. Like he was asking asking like just all these fans that were wanting to hang out with him if he if they give him pills or he could get him pills, pain pills, then he'd hang out with them. Hmm. So apparently he's just a pill head. Shit, I'd give him pain pills for doing these movies. I can understand. He probably actually needs them. Who knows? Well, he might. He was a stuntman or is a stuntman, whatever, so. Yeah. It's kind of funny. But, I mean, whenever I met him, he's the only dude I've ever seen at a convention that was straight up drinking beer at his table. I don't think I've ever seen that before. He had like a. What tall, was he drinking? A tall boy of like Natty Ice or something gross, like Ice House or something gross. Gross. Like somebody probably bought it for him. Yeah, and he was drink- chasing it with pain pills. Yeah, I mean, he is a I'm guy. telling you, I I did not have a good experience meeting him, and I, it's one of the reasons I don't like him. Like, I know a lot of people like him. I, I'm not a fan, right? Um, it's, it's nothing to do with the film. I think this film's awesome. I just, and I, I actually, Jason Manhattan's a great film too. I just, I just don't <laughs> takes Manhattan, but I just don't. I didn't have a good experience meeting him. That was another thing too. Honestly, takes Manhattan. I didn't really. As I got older, I didn't really like him anymore. Really, because growing up, this. You know, part seven used to be my favorite when I was little. That and six, and then now, honestly, I like um, five and six the best. You know, now that four I got, my now favorite. that I got older, That's four is my favorite film, hands down. Now that I get older, my favorites are in order. I guess I'd go six, five, three, and uh, I guess this one would be another one. So you don't like four? I do like four. I like four a lot. It's just I don't know. Four is my favorite film. I don't know it. it this, this is gonna. This is. I guess degraded. Kind of degrades the whole day. But four is really the only film of these I like. Yeah, I own all of them. Just to have them, but four is really the only film that I ever go back to. It's because I. I think three is boring. It's. The, I think two. It's the best. Is case. sucks. Part here's one the, is dumb. Here's the part where he's on fire for forty seconds. This one. This one's butchered. The kills in it. That's why. That's what dumbs this down so much is. And for me, six is too brightly lit. Yeah, it makes sense. It looks. It looks like a Golan and Globus production. Like it's just. <laughs> it, it's just really. It's too lit. I don't know. I don't know how to describe. And it's it's quirky. It's like National Lampoon's Jason Lives. Yeah. It's like I don't know. It, it just doesn't. <laughs> I see what you're saying. Yeah, it's and five, I hate. I think that's one of the worst films they've ever made. That movie is horrible. Why they would make a film where he's not in it, but Tommy Jarvis is, I've never understood. Yeah, it's like I've never liked that film. I remember renting it as a kid. There's some great kills in that movie. That's why I like it. But it's just, it was just so disheartening. The end of it, it's like falls, the mask falls off, then the other thing falls off, and the same ambulance driver. Yeah, it's like. Here's the problem with this film. This film would be amazing if if he had got to put what he wanted in this film. It oh, would yeah. be unbelievable. And you can amazing. tell that it's been butchered by watching it because there's like not um, even any blood in it really. For an R-rated film, I mean, they were really they were real tight watch. Six is so campy; it's awesome. Yeah. Uh, but I, I guess I would have to go. Th- this is going to be really weird, but I would have to go. For you, I would for me, say. for the ones that I watch nowadays, this is so weird. But I'll go for I wore two and three for you, in order. No, I'm not that big a fan of part three. You don't like three? No, I know two. You like? Right? I do like two. I, I, I'd probably have to go four, two, and eight are the ones that I will watch. Four, two, eight. And I don't know why. I don't have an explanation for that. In part one, the kills, the Savini makeup, and that is great. But it's just the movie. Just I don't know. It's slow as the first one, you know. 
And honestly, I think Jason looks really cool in this one. You know, but now I don't know. I just. I'm telling you, after meeting him, I, I don't know any other way to describe it. I just the only film with Kane Hodder that I like to watch repeatedly is Jason Takes Manhattan, and I don't know why. It's not for the kills. It's not because it's a horror film. There's just something campy and awful about it, and I like watching it. I don't know. Right. But I like this one. I'd probably put this one after eight. I'd probably put this. This would be my number four. Because I'm enjoying this. There's 70s daddy. Yeah, he's like, meh. I mean, he's supposed to be 70s daddy. He's more 80s daddy, but whatever. Yeah. But you can tell that Carl had a really cool idea for this, and he was going to do it balls out, and the, and the MPAA fucked him. Oh, here's uh, Speak of the Devil. There's John Carl Duclair right here grabbing the mask. There he is. That's him? Yep. Still got his beer. You never. I don't know. You know, off. it's like I was telling somebody recently about the Friday the Thirteenth films. Part two is the only one that I will be willing to watch. And then if you're going to put a gun to my head, then maybe three or four. But five and Look six that. and that one. Movie. I hate part one. I've never liked part one. I just think it's dumb. Yeah, it's, I mean, I hate John Saxon and everything. <laughs> I just don't like him. And I can't stand that Heather Lennon camp or whatever. Oh, you're talking about uh, Nightmare. I can't stand... I just don't like that movie. I hate it. I hate the first Friday the 13th... Or, excuse me, Nightmare on Elm Street movie. I hate that movie. The second one's awesome. The second one is my favorite. I love that movie. It's got Robert Russell and it's awesome. It's just good. Yeah. He's got some of the best... The best... I'll put his one-liners in part two up against about anything. Yeah. I even told him when I met him, I was like, this is my favorite film. And I'm tired by looking at the gay fit. It's like, well, I don't care. It's the best one to me. It's just raunchy. And and, uh, three would be my Southern Sex. Three is a great film. I love Dream Warriors. That's a great movie. It is great. And then probably, it's it's in order. That's how it is. I'm two, three, and four, and I'm done. I can't do part one. It doesn't do with Wes Craven. I just don't like the movie. I just think it's fucking boring. Johnny Depp's annoying in it. And I hate that one guy that looks like he's never had a bath. He's just... That the Tina Chick's boyfriend, he's like, oh, the guy that, on yeah. I don't know, that guy just bothers me in that film. <laughs> There's something about him, it's just, I don't know. But Yeah, Friday 13th Part 7, there it is. And a special Happy the Friday 13th episode. Uh, hopefully I can maybe put this one up later today. Because we got two more that I haven't, I failed to put up and I apologize, it's just been... Working my fucking ass off. You do. You work two jobs um, and all kinds of other stuff you got going on. I don't know how you do it. Uh, but now we will do our final thoughts. If we can get it. It's just going to take forever. Oh, it just didn't play. Okay. You know what? I can add it in later. It's fine. Um, final thoughts, Doctor. About you know, the, you know, the, I, the I, film and maybe the print and all that, you know, the usual. I. It's like watching a TV version of an R rated film. I just don't. It's. it's. I don't know. It's. There's something about the way this thing's shot that I don't like. Maybe it's because it is in the wintertime. I don't know. I don't. I don't know. I'm not. I don't like Kane Hodder as Jason. I never have. Yeah. I just don't. I'm, I know I'm in the outs on that. That that's what everybody. That's the go-to Jason for everybody. He's not for me. I don't like him as Jason. I think he's an arrogant pillhead. I just don't. I don't know. But I, the movie's okay. I don't know. It's it's aged not very well. I don't think, and it's it's not one that I go back to. I don't know. I don't. I don't know. I'm not a big fan of this movie. I don't. It's weird. Like I. And and, and even it was funny because uh, I guess we did an episode or we're doing an episode with with takes Manhattan and it's kind of the same thing it's just you're right there's Alabama right it's I don't know it's okay it's there's something about it I, I don't think any of the women in it are really that there's just nothing memorable about this film right I don't know I'm not I'm not real I wouldn't recommend this film to people I don't I, <laughs> I really wouldn't I just don't think it's a good film in the series it's just not my favorite I mean I'm weird about the ones that I like I don't know I don't we did my favorite, which was awesome. You guys can look at that up in the archive, but I don't know. The Blu-ray looks awesome. The special features on this, a lot of it's ported, but it's still awesome. Uh, I, I'm a collector. I like to have all these films, but it's this is not a go-to horror film for me. It's not. 
It's not. If somebody came up to me and was like, I want to watch Friday the 13th film, I would not recommend this film. Right. I would do four or six or two or. Four, six, or two is what I would do. I agree with that. Three, I like. Three, I've seen too much. So three's not a bad film. I've just seen it too much. I've seen right. three way too much. Um, kind of this, kind of the same problem that befalls uh, part one. I've just seen it too many times. Uh, the gore looks great. I don't know. It's it's okay. I, I still don't understand why why Kane Hodder is everybody's favorite Jason. Yeah, I've never liked him. I don't own any toys of Kane Hodder. I don't know. I don't. I just don't like him. It was really disappointing meeting him too. He was also really rude to my girlfriend. So I just don't. She was like, that was the best experience of my life. I was like, he really wasn't that nice. I just found out William Peter Bla- uh, Blatty died. The guy that wrote uh, The Exorcist. Are you kidding me? Mm-hmm. When did that happen? Uh, a couple hours ago. Are you kidding me? No. Can I tell you something really weird? What? I want, I want to talk about this right here on the podcast. I had a bag... You know, I have that on the screen. If I got the Blu-ray or whatever. This is a true story. I want to share this right now because it's so weird. And I'll do this as my final thoughts. I had a bag that I had with me of some movies that I had let a friend of ours borrow. Mm-hmm. Jens. And a friend of ours had... Uh, my, my friend that had a Jens had it or whatever and he had the bag and, and this chick stole those movies. She stole them. Huh. So I lost my copy of that. Well, when I was in that FYE that's going out of business recently, they had it. This was on this Tuesday, and I bought it again. Nice. And I just think that's really creepy. I know I'm not really freaked out right now. Right. Because that's kind of morbid. Yeah, and now he just, you know, the writer. The guy that wrote the novel and the screenplay for the film... As, uh, and directed the third film yeah. that we did for you recently. That's right. And has passed away. So that's really shitty. Um, which, of course, that episode will be coming to you guys, I promise. But that's our uh, Napalm Death episode is uh, Exorcist 3. So um, I guess now we need to edit that out and I'll put a forward on there. Yeah, we do a uh, tribute. Do a tribute, so maybe we should... I can definitely get that. But isn't that weird that it got stolen and then I got it back? And I got it back just a few days ago. Yeah, that's crazy. Because it was in there and I got it. I was just like, I have to have that back. Highly recommend that. It definitely, another reason I'm revising my list. That's also something that I didn't have on the list that definitely needs to be on that list. Right. Because that director's code, that was nasty. It is really good. Um, but you know, it's it's. I, if I'm being too critical, I just it's it's. it's I don't know. I I just don't like Kane Hodder as Jason. It, the yeah. film's fine. I just don't like him. Yeah, and I, I mean, for mine, I you know, I'll do final thoughts real quick. Um, the Blu-ray looks you know pretty pretty decent. It does. It's not the best. It's just you know whatever. It's uh, stock Blu-ray stuff. It's not like amazing. Like a, it's not a Scream Factory or an Arrow or a. Vestrin or uh, you know even like Vinegar Syndrome or anything like that. It's not like one of their Blu-rays, but it's but it may be all we ever get or Grindhouse. It's just you know it's just it is what it is. I don't think we'd get anything bigger unless maybe there's a um, so anniversary edition or a collector's or thing. Yeah, be nice if somebody did, but I don't. The companies that own those, unfortunately, probably never get that. Yeah, it's kind of a big company thing, so I don't know. Um, it looks fine for what it is. It's just Jason films, whatever. Um, I liked the film when I was younger. Watching it now, I haven't seen it in a little while. I've watched this film too much, more than any of the other ones. So this is your three. You like it, but you've just seen it too much. Yeah, and, you know, watching it now when I expect more out of it and what I know, I know the film that it could have been, uh, it's kind of disappointing to watch it chopped and skewed. Because you it's, can tell. It's butchered. Yeah. I, yeah. It, and I, I'm, I'm not trying to be harsh about it. I'm, I'm glad we did it. This would have been a great stuff, film. It, just... it would have been a great horror film like a, an essential to like gore fr- you know gore fiends and totally agree shit, with like you. myself if they had kept it the way that it was supposed to be there's more kills in, in uh, the, some of the other films we've mentioned that we like in yeah. this series there's just there's the kills in this are just not there well because they cut out everything the, the most gruesome one is the uh, 
the, the Vatch face one because you actually see his face after, but all the other ones you don't see it. You know, no. if you guys watch the that the the extras on the, either the DVD because it's the same thing that's on the Blu-ray, you can see what Corey was talking about earlier the raw footage of the the yeah, kills that, that should be. It's just a shame because it is. It's th- this has to just be a heartbreaker for John mm-hmm. or Carl, whatever it's called. The, John Carl, yeah. Beautiful, yeah. So, with that being said, uh, film could have been a lot better uh, as far as the Blu-ray release. You know, it's it's, it's good. Um, do I recommend it? I recommend a lot of the other Jasons first, but this one is a good one as far as the story. I think is very ambitious, and I admire that because it's very hard to do. Well, like I said, I knocked it. Yeah. You I gotta have all of it. You gotta kind of. You gotta have all. You gotta kind of try and reinvent something instead of just Jason comes back and kills more teenagers. He comes back, kills more teenagers. I'm fine with that, but you know, once they threw in Tommy Jarvis as an adversary to Jason, then they're like, "Oh, I want to throw in another adversary." And I thought the supernatural adversary was kind of cool because it is. It'll, She's just a troll. Yeah. It's the casting. It's, yeah. The film's casting on this. I don't know if he just had a budget of like fifty cents, or he paid everybody. <laughs> In pain pills to Kane Hodder, or everybody was <laughs> giving pain pills to Kane Hodder. But and I and if y'all get mad about this, I'm just telling you the truth. If you ever meet him at a convention, he's an asshole. He's rude and he wants too much money for his stuff. I'm not paying you fifty dollars. He was charging. My girlfriend paid him fifty dollars for an autograph and a photo. It's ridiculous. Yeah. I wouldn't give you five bucks. <laughs> or pills. I just don't like. I don't. I, you know. I mean, the only movie that he's in that I even halfway like is Takes Manhattan, and it's not because of the kills. There's better kills than this, and this is a better film. Seven is, but for some reason, Eight is so campy and dumb. I like it. Yeah, it feels more like an '80s movie than Seven. Seven doesn't even feel like a timepiece. It it's it's, like it's just movie. bad, but it's uh-huh. it's just you know. But I love John Carl Buechler. I love. His I do work. too. Uh, Love the effects in the movie. The effects look great. Jason looks great. The effects that aren't there. Yeah, the effects that we didn't get to see. But uh, overall, you know, it's it's a Jason Films Part 7. Uh, it's one of the last good ones. You know, 8, eight I have my problems with, too. But, uh, you know, it's not perfect. It's just a slasher film, Jason movie. You know, there's all you can expect for it uh, from it is... Is, is babes and, and great kills. Did we get that? Not really, honestly. Well, it's, it could it's, have been. It's while I'm having this conversation, I feel like we deserve to be honest about it because I don't want people to just be like, yeah, Jason Part Third, great. Yeah. We are way too specific on horror stuff to just be like, yeah, th- this this edited turd is, is perfect <laughs> for you. Well, that's what we're here for. Yeah. yeah. We Help try to tell it. people. It's like, it was fun to watch today. I'm glad we watched Friday But look, if, you, if like, you see the, the double, you know, if you see the... Uh, if you're in a store or you're on Amazon, you have the money, whatever you do. Uh, if you see the Blu-ray box set of Friday the 13th or you see this double feature set that I have, then definitely buy it and pick it up as a collector because it's, yeah, it's they're out of print, so go buy them. Um, especially if you see it in the store, like a FYE or something like that. If you see the double feature, it's going to be like you know, 10 bucks is how much I pay for it, I think. So definitely buy it if you see it because that's, that's a good deal for you. So... I uh, definitely recommend at least buying it and having it because, you know, if you're a collector like us, then why not? But um, now we have Sam, my buddy from Condemned, the vocalist, our candid interview that I did with him. We cover a lot of ground, talk a lot of controversial stuff, uh, movies, uh, horror, and obviously death metal. So uh, his Divine Shadow available now, Unique Leader Records, Sam from Condemned. As always, stay fucking gory. All right, this is Dr. Vincent West, the Phantasm Podcast. I am here with my Artist of the Month for March. I am here with Sam from Condemned. How you doing, brother? Good, man. Good. Thanks for having us. Or, well, me, rather. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man. Well, I appreciate this, and I'm sorry it took a minute to kind of get everything going here, but uh, we got it, got it rolling now. Uh, so let's talk about Condemned. Let's talk about, if you do a, uh, uh, let's see here, do a brief history of the band for me. Well, the band started in, uh, in 2004. Some neighborhood kids, we're all from the same hometown. Okay. Down in uh, Imperial Beach, in a bordering Tijuana. Okay. Um, and... The dudes actually, I guess, were just getting into, like, death metal and stuff and kind of popped up at my old house with a, a former band of mine. We were practicing in the garage that we kind of converted to a studio, and they uh, they dropped in, and they could hear it, obviously, bleeding through the walls, and were super 
into it, and uh, yeah, they, they showed us like what they had. They actually had a their first show with the singer at one of our our crazy house shows we used to throw. Okay. Yeah. They solidified their lineup, kind of you know made some moves and released a couple albums that had kind of passed into like underground legend and uh, you know a few more lineup changes and. I was asked to join, uh, what, 2013 now? Okay. So, yeah, I mean, the the core, I guess, musically, the group is the guitarist, Steve, you know, but we all have, kind of have the same sensibility, and we're all into a lot of the same bands. Right. So, it's the band now, I guess, in its current incarnation is kind of a, kind of a combination of all, of all the stuff we like. Stuff we want to achieve with like death metal, and you know, um, I guess we, we write stuff that we would want to hear, basically. <sighs> Well, you know, what, what caught me with it, because the, the first thing that I ever heard was uh, Realms of the Ungodly, and I was like, for me, just, I don't know, man, there, there are so much, I, I guess, and, and I don't want to get on a rant about this, and, and I, I don't think I'll offend you with this, but, you know, the whole deathcore garbage thing, I can't, I just can't do it. I grew up on, on, uh, early thrash stuff, and, and then what, you know, basically the beginning of death metal. So for me, when I hear, uh, what I consider to be like, you know, true death metal, it's like, it's, it's so refreshing. And I, I just want to thank you as a fan, uh, uh, for condemned, uh, to, to, to everybody in the band I that's ever been in it. I, I just love the, uh, the pureness of it. I mean, I, yeah, yeah we, we, uh, I mean, I mean, I, I guess I can only speak for myself, but we, we kind of feel the same way about like the, the, the way that, you know, a, a lot of, uh, kind of music with more appeal is, is kind of manifested in like death core and shit like that, you know, but yeah, I mean, especially now, now more than ever, I think we're trying to like honor, you know, kind of like death metal in the traditional sense and still do, you know, our own thing, kind of like still looking forward, but you know, like standing on the shoulders of giants or however you want to call it with like the, the big shit in death metal, you know, like suffocation, cannibal course, all that stuff, you know, so right. we, we try to keep it very, you know, the link kind of very direct and, and not like, how do I want to say, so so many degrees of separation, you know, like at the end of the day, we're like stoked to do death metal and we don't want, you know, any qualms with interpretation you know yeah i mean it <clears throat> it's just it's nice to for me to to hear a band that actually is just you know just trying to to you know i mean you're doing different things with it but at the same time the the heart of it's still there and i i feel like a lot of bands have gotten away from that including bands that i grew up listening to uh in that genre that to me have gotten too experimental or they've gotten away from what they do you know and and i just i don't know it's refreshing and i i thank you for uh for carrying the flag for it because i think a lot of i don't know i i can't i can't do some of the stuff you know uh the I get the deathcore stuff and the the tech death stuff because to me you know to me growing up technical death metal was the death human record you know that was like the yeah, the yeah. blueprint of it, and I remember seeing Cynic open for Cannibal Corpse on the Bleeding tour. You know, and I was like, oh, I guess that's like technical death metal. I don't know. Not that I was really too much or Gore Guts or whatever, and I like them, and and I guess Luke Lemay continues to do kind of his thing or whatever, and I appreciate that. But I don't know. I couldn't. I could never do the <clears throat> you know the faceless and all that stuff. I just. I, don't know, I guess it's just a different age and era for me. I just. I, I I look for the the pure stuff. That's what that's what drew me to uh, to you guys. So it's uh, and yeah, we're, I want to share that with people because I think there's other people like minded like me where it's like you know it's nice to see someone uh, appreciate. I don't know the brutality of it. I just I feel like a lot of people have gotten away from that, and I I don't know. I just I really appreciate what you're all doing. Uh, it definitely on the new record as well, you know, but 
just in general, I think it's it's just I don't know, it's refreshing to me. It's nice. It's like a an evil breath of fresh air. It's just cool. It's uh right. I don't really I know any other way to put it, but it's 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 nice, man. It really is and the the artwork and just everything. It's just it's just the whole package and it's I'm sure you guys bring it live as well. I haven't had the pleasure yet, but uh I will try to make that happen at some point as well. So, but but yeah, I hopefully one day. Yeah, man, I I uh I've shared some of your all's flyers and stuff on the page and stuff, so hopefully some folks out there have got some fans that live in that area, they got to go check it out or whatever, but uh but yeah, I definitely want to. Um but yeah, I you know, it's I don't know. And and maybe I'm just kind of jaded with it, but it just I don't know. It's I I went last year to Summer Slaughter to interview um Terrence from Suffocation, and I interviewed uh, Alex from Crisian. But I mean, anything really outside of that, you know. And I mean, I, the Cannibal guys I've never interviewed, but uh, that's a, another story that I can't talk about on here. But, but yeah, you know. The, but the rest of the bill, you know, Carnifex. I just, I don't know. And I'm not trying to just start shit with people. But I just, I can't get into that stuff. I just don't understand it. I, I feel like I feel like I'm at Hot Topic in the mall. You know, I just don't. I don't know. But, yeah. Yeah. I, I totally get what you're saying too, and I mean, well, I and especially you come from like kind of a different era, you know. Like, I like lots of old earache bands and old road, Roadrunner bands. Oh yeah, definitely. Super sounds big and menacing, and uh, you know, like not a lot of bells and whistles. It's just like raw. That stuff to me, well, and to us, is kind of more. No, real, you know, it's got more of like a visceral impact rather than like, you know, being, I don't want to say pretentious, but you know, like more kind of a style of a substance. And I'm not like trying to say that we, you know, rewrote some kind of like death metal playbook or whatever, but you know, I mean, we, we definitely like put our all into that stuff and, you know, it, 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 to an extent it kind of like, comes out the way that it, it comes out, you know, it's just like, there's no real template for, uh, well, you know, it's just kind of like a, like, it, it's just kind of like a manifestation of, I guess, us trying to make some good fucking death metal without any, like, added, added filler. Right, I mean, it's, it's pure, it's a, it's just, uh, you know, you guys, willed it to be done and there it is and it's I, that's what i love about it i mean i think it's uh you know all this different stuff that comes out or whatever and you know and i like i said and i'm not i'm not i'm not trying to bash on anything or whatever i mean i'll i'll bash deathcore all day long myself personally but i i just don't you know i don't understand it and i don't and i guess it's generational but i just don't get it i i feel like they take some of the best parts out of stuff that i grew up listening to and then they act like they invented something i don't know i guess glenn benton from deicide i think had the best quote for it and again i'm not trying to include you in this but i think you'll you'll get a kick out of this if you've never heard this quote glenn benton's like yeah it's like fucking grunge i just want to wash it go down the fucking toilet so i i have a real negative view towards it and it's mainly from working and living around some and just being around some of those fans and bands of that stuff. I, I remember a kid a couple years ago, we went to see King Diamond, literally drove just to see King Diamond at that Mayhem Festival. And some kid wearing Whitechapel garbage and tried to like fight me and stuff. And he was like in our seats. That we had paid for and we had drove to, to just go see King Dom and so. But anyway, but it's just a, it's just a, really negative thing, and I'm not trying to just dwell on that. But anybody that's ever listened to me on this podcast knows how I feel about it. So, but yeah, but thank you guys for, you know, for flying the flag, man. I mean, I you know I can't do it alone, and it's it's nice to have uh, bands out there that that uh, that get it. You know, and you talk about some of the Eric stuff. You know, I, God, I love Napalm Death and. Old carcass stuff and and uh, I don't I bolt thrower I think was on that label I don't know I always like bolt yeah. thrower too you know that stuff's good oh yeah all that stuff's good yeah, so um, yeah I, I I don't know you know I mean we 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 don't like to alienate people you know but you know for example I work with a, a, 
a younger dude. He's used for like all the, the techie stuff, you know? And yeah, I showed him something like uh, an older Opeth album and he was floored, you know? And it was like, dude, this has been around forever, you know? Like, right. This isn't the last few years. Like, you know, I mean, it's cool to kind of expand some boundaries. And I, I understand that like, you know, your point of reference is kind of very by what scene you like adhering to or the people that you hang around but it, it's nice when when people kind of like expand past like what's immediately you know within within their uh, their grasp and I, I I think that since you know we're all you know well getting you know the other guys are getting close to mid 30s and then me and the drummer are like in our late 30s you know like we take a little bit of everything that we've been into with us, and it's, I don't know, I, I like the combination that comes out, you know, there's no real, like, artifice behind it, it just kind of... Yeah, it's a natural progression, I, I see what you mean, It's and that's cool. I mean, like I said, it's, yeah. it's. Uh, I think it definitely shows, and you definitely hear it in the music, and, and you know, and that's, uh, and, and in my in my opinion, that's a rare thing, and I just, I really appreciate what you guys are trying to do, and... You know, uh, like one of my favorite bands uh, is Crisian, and, and one of the reasons I like Crisian so much is because I can always depend on Crisian to give me what I want, you know, and that's what I want to say about Condemned, and I want everybody on our podcast to know that. That's why I love your band. I think of a Condemned release, man, it's just like, there you go. I'm good. <laughs> right. Yeah, well, I'm definitely flattered to be you mentioned the same breath, breath as Christian too <laughs> for sure but yeah I mean it's just yeah, it, I mean, it, for me as a fan because I'm, I'm I you know maybe I'm kind of a snob or whatever but I'm just kind of into what I'm into and and uh growing up I was like a metal nerd in school and you know I remember when I was in school like everybody's like oh he's a hood or whatever because I wore like the denim vest with the leather jacket and all that stuff which I haven't seen that come back. I see people wearing vests, but I haven't seen them doing that, which I totally stole from Chris Barnes. So, <laughs> yeah, you know, and, and it was, but it's, you know, it's, and you get older and you just kind of do your own thing. And it's just, I don't know. I guess I just kind of like, I'm, I try to be open-minded, but I guess to some degree, I'm just kind of set in my ways. I don't know, but it's kind of like it's kind of like when when I would buy a Motorhead record, I always knew what I was going to get. I knew Lemmy wasn't going to do a a grunge album or a fucking you know uh, whatever. He he didn't experiment, and I appreciated that. I guess is what I'm trying to say. Um, you guys experiment. I'm going to be interested in it regardless, and and a lot of other bands that I listen to. But I you know there was something comforting about going to the store and walking in a record store and buying a motorhead uh record or a uh cd or even cassette growing up and it always sounded like motorhead so i i don't know i whether you guys are doing that or not i just appreciate that when i buy a condemned record i'm like man this is fucking condemned this is fucking cool so yeah it's definitely it's, it's nice when you know the, the bands you're into have like a, their own sense of identity rather than you know trying to uh, get into one thing or another. And I, I think I think now, I mean, people, some people are taken aback by it. And, and for us, I think now, it's, it's just kind of a, kind of a more focused, like, singular representation of the band, you know? Like, I mean, different members aside, it's, <clears throat> it's all, you know, Steve's ripping and stuff. So it's, it's just more finely honed, I think. And I, I think it just kind of, like, it's to the, uh, the meat and potatoes of like the essence of what you know the his vision for condemned is too. Well, I thank him for it. You have to tell him I said thank you for it, and I thank you for it, and every one of you, past and present. I I don't know. It's it's just a man. It's a breath of fresh air for me as a as a fan. It's just uh, I don't know. I can't say enough about it. And uh, talk a little bit about. Uh, the new album for a second. I wanted to ask you about this. I was listening to it last night when, when you and I were kind of uh, chatting back and forth, but I listened to the whole thing. What are some of those interludes from? Those things are fucking cool. It sounds like something melting, or I'm not really sure what was going on. Yeah, there's a... 
we tried to make it. I don't know, I'm into a lot of, like, retro kind of 80s type stuff, you know, horror movies and stuff like that, and we wanted kind of a, the interest to be, you know, a little, a little, I guess, grainy, but still, I don't want to say, you know, I guess not, like, modern production values, but, uh, yeah, some of them are just, like, programmed instrumentals like the, the intro to the entire album is right. programmed by me <coughs> and then uh, the other stuff is like samples that are layered and, and manipulated and filtered and stuff like um, I think the one you're talking about is a sample of a swarm of locusts that's just kind of like layered over and over I absolutely love it it's cool you know and, and they're, they're kind of little movements that add to like I guess the uh, the the meaning of the album or the, the song that you know comes after right um, like if you read along with all that foolishness it, it I mean in my mind it kind of makes sense you know like oh it totally makes sense it it, it, it adds so many um, layers to the to your music and I I loved it I noticed it because um, I was listening to it um, on headphones initially when I bought the record, and then I was with my buddy of mine, and he has a really nice like Bose stereo system in his car, and I was listening to it last night, I was like, this is fucking amazing. It was just like swimming around the speakers. I just thought it was really cool. Yeah, we're, we're psyched with how those came out. It's uh, something we've been talking about for a while. Like, we tried to uh, take up some of the dead time in our sets with stuff like that, and I, I think it was just kind of... Uh, like a an outgrowth of, of, of that, you know, like <coughs> right, uh, right. Little inter- interlude without you know just going straight into the next song or whatever. It, it kind of adds to the atmosphere. Oh, it definitely does, and it it I don't know. It makes the for me the or you know for the listener it it gives you so much. Uh, I don't know. It, it's like the story unfolding. It was just really cool. Yeah, you know, definitely found stuff to work on, you know. I'd like to kind of mess around with that a little more. I don't know. I mean, I, I know it's going to be a ways away, but when we start to kind of brainstorm, maybe do some more stuff like that. It's, it's fun. Yeah, it's really, it's really, really cool. And uh, let's talk a minute, if it's cool, with the, keep going with the, the new album. Uh, where did you guys record the new record? We recorded, we tracked everything at a place called Trench, Trench Studios in Corona. Okay. Um, with this gentleman named John Haddad. He did, uh, he's done stuff with Exhumed, I think, maybe Intronaut. Um, okay. I believe Phobia and uh, Murder Construct. Okay. Um, yeah, he, he used to play in Phobia, so he's got a, a good knack for like, Got to grind drums down and stuff, and I, he did a really bang up job. Um, yeah, the production's and, killer. And we were we were really happy with it. He was a super accommodating dude too, and uh, yeah, he, he you know he wasn't a ball buster, and he was he had he had nice helpful suggestions for me when I was turning purple in the face. You know? <laughs> <laughs> um, and then we got. Uh, we got mixed and uh, reamped at Mana Studios by our buddy Art. He uh, he works in the studio with Eric Rutten. Oh yes, very very familiar with those gentlemen. Yeah. Well, no, you know what? No wonder it has just that loving touch to it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they definitely know their shit too. We were really happy with the way that came out as well. Well, you know. I- to to kind of sidetrack on on Eric a second, um, we've never had him on the podcast, but the last chance I could have actually we we tried to get him on our very first interview we did was with Brian from the singer for Vital Remains, and they were opening for Hate Eternal. This was last May, and Eric just he just wasn't available to do it or whatever. But I wanted to say something real quick, and I wanted to kind of talk with you about it. Um, I was always a big fan of Scott Burns growing up. To me, Eric is the modern Scott Burns. Yeah, he's, he's got his fingers on. Yeah, it seems like 
so much stuff these days, you know? Yeah, I mean, I... I I just love him, you know. I love what he did with Goat Whore. I love what he did with Chrisian. I I love that he's doing the new Morbid Angel record. Uh, and oh yeah, it's just exciting, man. I just think he's, you know. In fact, I'll I'll tell you a funny story, and this this is no joke. the 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 last time that I saw Paul in Cannibal, I told him I was like, you know, I think I would have stayed with with Eric, and he's like, we well, you know we wanted to try something new and stuff. I was like, I know, but I I really think you should have stayed with Eric. <laughs> and I think I kind of miffed him a little bit, but it was funny. But I've known Paul for a long time, but it was it was it was funny because I just I, the Mark Lewis thing I didn't understand that with Cannibal. But hey, they want to do something different. It's fun, but but I just I love Eric. I don't know. I I will buy a record if I saw that he produced it. That's how much I like him. So yeah, yeah, definitely. And it, you know, it kind of seems like he uh, he works with stuff that you know. It was kind of like a recommendation, like seeing his name on there. You know, like it, man, I'm telling you, to me, work. to me, it's the seal of approval. I just love him. Yeah, and I love that. I love that you guys um, had some stuff down there and there at that studio. Maybe y'all can work with Eric one day. That would be fucking sick. Yeah, that's what I was. You guys can stay with me if you need to. Oh, word. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, but yeah, man. I mean, it. I. That's fucking. That's awesome. But I. Yeah. To, to go back, the man, the guy that did your record, the the the. What a great job, man. That's. I mean, I love it. I mean, I. I really do the production on it. And you got. I mean, and then you knock it out of the park. You got the 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 par the fucking cover art. Oh my god. And yeah, that's, we were really happy with how it came out. I mean, it's, y'all just got it going on, man. You got everything, as far as I'm concerned, the selling point for a, a fucking nasty ass death metal record. Just, it's just like, I don't know, I just knocked it out. I'm just like, wow. So that's why I was so heavy. Uh, and hopefully, our listeners uh, listen to me on that. I tried to promote the hell out of it. So, but then that's why. It's it's a great fucking album. It's got everything. It's got the cover art. It's got the because I I don't do the digital stuff. I like to have physical copies of stuff. Still, I guess I'm still kind of holding on to that from my childhood. So, but um, that's awesome. But you guys have so much cool merch for the new record too. The vinyl and the shirts and the I saw all the stuff Unique Leader had, and then you guys had posted on your page. I was like, wow, there's some really cool merch for the new record too. Yeah, yeah, I, I know. I'm like fighting not to like break my bank account just to, to get some of that stuff, you know, just to, just to have. <laughs> of course, yeah, of course. Why wouldn't you? I mean, obviously, other than financial reasons, but right. But yeah, there's some y'all just have. It's just, just some great stuff, and everybody listening, you can pick all that stuff up. Uh, it's uh, indie merch, correct? Yeah. Cool. So definitely go check that out. There's all kinds of goodies there. Uh, I don't want my uh, balls cut off by my uh, by the misses, so I haven't got to dive into that yet. But I'm going to get my tax return. So, but but yeah, I. And you want to talk a minute about, uh, I, get, I get sidetracked just blabbling here, babbling about stuff, but um, the was that the first time you guys had used PAR? No, the yeah, PAR off, uh, I can't even talk. I can't, I wasn't even going to, I wasn't even going to try to touch that last name because I can't say it. <laughs> <laughs> PAR uh, actually did the, uh, the cover art for the first Condemned album, Desecrate the Vile. He did. Yeah. See, I can't find yeah. that. I can't find that. I gotta find that. I gotta find that record. Pretty cool. Well, that's awesome, man. So they, y'all have a, as a band, have a history with him. That's that's pretty exciting. Yeah, and it, it kind of, I guess, comes full circle. You know, like the band is uh, changed and grown, and, and so is he. So we're, we're really, I mean, I, I I always like the old artwork, but I'm really hyped on the new one too. Like, it, it lends itself well to what we have going on, I guess, in terms of subject matter. Right. And he was very receptive to our suggestions and stuff. Definitely knocked it out of the park. Oh, yeah, he definitely did. You got a grand slam with that. Um, 
And do you want to talk uh, a little bit about uh, so currently? So there's there's four of you, right? Yeah. Okay, and the original member would be. Is there just one at this yeah. point, or? Yeah, yeah, it's just the guitar. Okay. And man, your all's lineup. I uh, wow, it's. I mean, I. It's just really good. I don't know. I think you guys are firing on all cylinders, and the new album's nasty. And you know, you get the whole package there, and hopefully get you guys out on a tour and stuff i would love to see you guys out with you know with somebody that way you get some love because i'm i'm doing my ass trying to bust my ass to get get some love for you guys so i'm on my end but yeah i i would kill to see you guys live i kept i kept seeing the the flyers for some of the shows you were doing around i believe california and stuff and i was like oh man i gotta get out to california (laughs) (laughs) yeah um well you know i i I'm hoping some big things happen. We got some stuff lined up for later on this year, you know. And but yeah, I mean, God, the style. I don't. I don't really think the band's ever been anywhere past Texas, you know. Um, wow. So yeah, I, I and I got some friends out in Florida too, you know. I definitely want to make it happen, but I guess it's just a a matter of time. Oh sure. I mean. Hopefully sooner than later, but yeah, I mean, I, I'm sure that's just all a, a numbers game too, and having to get mixed up and you know finding, I guess, the right tour package and all that stuff for you guys too. So yeah, something we're kind of perpetually working on, but we, we're getting some offers, so hopefully we can make some of it and do a, a couple good runs. Yeah, I mean, I I would love to see you guys out with you know whoever it was be a man. I mean, I would go to the show because I do that as a as a fan. I'll go to. Um, we went. Uh, I guess it was back in February. We drove up to Atlanta just to see Immolation, like the rest of the bill. And I'm not even going to say who it was, but I just didn't feel like they fit on the rest of that bill. But I mean, we wanted to see Immolation. And we went and interviewed them and went to that. So you know, we'll do that. So we'll travel. You know. If we have to, you guys are on a bill or package or whatever. Not, it's not necessarily in Florida. We'll go. We go up to shows in Atlanta all the time. I've got family there too. So nice, nice. Yeah. So I and I grew up there. I'm Canadian, but I grew up in. Uh, I was born in Canada. I was raised in uh, Georgia, between Georgia and Florida. So I kind of went back and forth. So my parents were separated. But but yeah, we we always go to um um to uh, Masquerade in Atlanta. I've been going there since I was like 15. So. It's moved now, but it's not in the same place, which kind of sucks. But, but yeah, man, wherever you guys are at, hopefully we can we can get up there, <clears throat> or I'll get up there one. But um, but yeah, I you know last year it seemed like there were no, and I wanted to talk to you about this, see what you thought of this. But I last year to me it seemed like there were hardly any death metal tours, and this year there's a bunch. Yeah, no, there's so much new music coming out too. It's crazy. Um, yeah, well. Hopefully, hopefully that that is a wave that continues for the foreseeable future. You know, I uh, yeah, I mean, it, there's so much stuff going on now that it's hard for me to kind of pick and choose what I want to go to. It's, oh, I bet. It, it all seems to, you being in California too, I bet you you have the pick of the litter. I'm sure everything comes through there. Well, not so much San Diego. People kind of skip San Diego, but yeah, when they do, it's, it's usually good stuff. That's awesome. Now, San Diego, so are you friends with uh, a lot of the other bands in the scene out there in San Diego? Or Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, Pathology's from there, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yeah, yeah, Pathology's from here. I'm Actually, a big Pathology um, fan, man. I love that band. Oh, cool. Uh, um, prior to Pathology, Dave Astor, the drummer, was in a, an old band of mine. Are you serious? Um, yeah, we, we jammed together for a while. He's a good dude. I uh, the only one I know, and we had him on the show is is Matty. Uh, we had Matty on, um, and okay. I, and I've become pretty good friends with him. I just love his vocals, and and uh, but I've never I've never met Dave, uh, but I like him. Obviously, I'm a huge fan. So I think the last two records they put out were just fucking nasty. So 
I really enjoyed that. In fact, I was going to go to that. Uh, it was kind of a deal breaker for me when I found out they weren't going to be at that Las Vegas Death Fest. I, so I actually am not going yeah. now because uh, pathology dropped off. I was just like, well, let's decide not to do that. Now, what about the Disgorge guys? Are you friends with them? Oh, yeah. Yeah. They're they're good dudes. Man. Actually, Angel. Love that band. Yeah. Angel, Angel who uh, does vocals in Disgorge, was the original vocalist for Condemned. So it's like... No you know, shit. I did not know that. Yeah. It, it's uh, it's kind of like a big inbred family, you know, between bands. There's so many bands that people have come and gone or share members or whatnot. Right. But yeah, yeah, they're all really good dudes. Now, is he the is he the current singer for Disgorge? Yeah. I absolutely love him, man. I, I And I, I've tried... This is a funny story. I've tried for like, God, going on a year and a half uh, through Ricky to try to get them on the show, and I've never had any luck at it. So maybe, I don't know, maybe you can get me in touch with Angel or something. I, I would love to have those guys on, man. I'm a, I'm a huge fan. I love that yeah, band. It's just, I think Ricky has a lot of stuff going on, and I feel like I'm always bothering him when I'm trying to ask him about it, so I just kind of don't bother him with it anymore, but maybe. Maybe one day we can get some of those guys on. Because that Angel guy is fucking nasty, man. I watched a club show of them playing somewhere out in California, and it was on YouTube, and it was fucking raunchy. <laughs> yeah, we can definitely put, a, put up a good word, you know. And I'm sure it's just a matter of logistics, too. Like, like I'm sure they've got stuff going on and stuff. And like I said, it's, it's to the point now where I don't even want to ask Ricky. I feel like I've aggravated him to death when he was uh, doing stuff with suffocation, and I... I, I literally just aggravated the shit out of him. I feel really bad. So, Ricky, if you're listening, I'm really sorry. But, uh, but yeah, I, um, we first started doing the podcast. I was like, oh, God, I would love to have a score, John. He's like, okay, man, okay, dude, calm down. It's good. <laughs> but <laughs> but anyway, but, yeah, that, now, now what's, what's some of the other bands maybe that I'm missing there in that scene? So, Disgorge, obviously, Condemned, uh, and, uh, and uh, Pathology. Yeah, and of course, of course, you know, cattle decapitation. There's probably I always, I, I always, uh, uh, I always forget they're from that area. I, I know that sounds silly, but yeah. I always forget they're from that area. So we've definitely never had those guys on yet. It just never, it's just not happened. So, but, but yeah, that's awesome. Anybody else that I'm forgetting? God, there's, there's so many bands. There's, there's a lot of a lot of kind of uh, more, I guess, local bands, you know. But there's you know there's some good bands that are making stuff happen. I, I see Ascended Dead. They're from uh, North County. They're all over the place. They're playing the uh, this big death fest that's going on up north. Oh, cool! Here. And they're they're gnarly. Um, we have buddies. Our bass player actually split time in this band called Seraphic Disgust. It's kind of black and death metal. Nice. Yeah, I've never, I've never, I've never, I have to check those guys out. I've never listened to them. And then, you know, I, I, I have some good friends uh, in this band called Lurid Memory. They're, they're awesome. I have a former bandmate blasting away for them. Really good progressive stuff. And then, you know, we have a, a bunch of friends down south, too, down in Mexico. A lot of killer bands down there. Oh, yeah. I bet. There's, I mean, I um, I went, God, I, I think this was like 02 or 03. I went to some type of festival in Mexico City because I wanted to see Gorgoroth, and I went there. Man, that's some of the craziest shit I've ever seen in my life. Those people raise hell. It was fucking awesome. I absolutely loved it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's out of control down there sometimes. And I got to see a lot of stuff, uh, you know, like, like Gorgoroth that, I, to my knowledge, never played in America. So it was actually really fucking cool to, uh, at the time. And, yeah. And because uh, I wanted to see him with Gaul or whatever. So it was, it was cool. It was fun. Uh, but, yeah. So it, it sounds like the San Diego scene. There's a lot of a lot of cool stuff there. Um, I, uh, I I can't believe I forgot about cattle decapitation. Yeah, they're definitely from there. I it's uh, I don't know why I always want to associate them with like San Francisco. I don't know where the hell I was thinking they weren't from San Diego, but they're, they're always they're always traveling. It seems so. <laughs> you know, they are. Yeah, 
They definitely are. Those guys are busy. They're definitely always busy. Um, yeah. Uh, do you guys have some shows coming up that you want to talk about or anything? Uh, yeah, we have we have one in early April in in Fullerton. It, it's kind of a it's a a weekday show, but it's cool. You know, like we're playing with some label mates um, <clears throat> from Unique Leader called Lord of War. Okay, a couple other bands from up in the area. LA band called Blood Scribe, and uh, actually Burton Bell from Fear Factory is going to be guest DJing too. So that's cool. Oh, that's I'll probably, cool. I'll probably geek out, be a little fanboy, you know, maybe take a picture or something. But cool. Yeah, it should be a good time. Well, that's uh, awesome. What, Wednesday, April twelfth, I believe. Okay. You guys have flyers up. I'll put it. I'll put it on the page and stuff, so people will know. Yeah, we got some flyers. I gotta, I gotta make sure everything's up on social media, at least in the, the days leading up to the show. Yeah, man, I'll get it on there for you. I'll put it on our end anyway, and some people to check it out. They're in the area, so definitely go. I know I would if I was in the area, but I've got a friend that lives in Los Angeles, so I'm hoping if you guys are doing some stuff, maybe later in the year, or if I'm out there, maybe I can just take a little journey up to San Diego and get to see you guys play. Hopefully, that's what I'm hoping to do anyway. Huh. Oh, yeah, anytime. Just drop us a line. Maybe we'll see if uh, things can coincide. Yeah, or even, hell, if it just come watch y'all practice or something, we'll do something. It'd be fucking fun. But I haven't been out there to see him in a long time. And he used to live in Anaheim, and he now just lives, I guess, in L.A. So, But I haven't been out to see him in a long time. So, But, yeah, man, that's exciting. So you got the show in April. Anything past April you you guys have a uh, plan you want to talk about? or We got some stuff in the works. Um, we're going to do some touring overseas. Oh, that's awesome. Late September. But uh, aside from that, um, the only thing we have going on domestically is in August. We're playing the the <clears throat> New York Death Fest in, in Brooklyn. Oh, man. They have they usually have some sick shit there. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm super hyped. We're going to be playing at St. Vitus. So, like, it's kind of a landmark, you know? So Definitely. It'll be a good time. And I, I think we're going to do a date in Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Now, have they announced the bill for that festival? There, there have been some bands announced. No, wait. Yeah, I, I, I believe the flyer's out. Our, our buddy, um, our buddy Anthony, he goes by the name Gutter Christ. Okay. He's, uh, he's the one taking care of all this stuff. But the flyer's out. There's some, some killer bands on there. I know we're going to be playing with Internal Bleeding. Um, oh, yeah. I'm, go- I'm going to see them in May uh, with Vader. They're playing a little bar called the Earl in Atlanta, and that place is a dive, and I can't believe I'm getting to see them and Vader in the same little tiny hole. It's awesome. I love that bar. Uh, it's going to be so red. Yeah, well, that'll be... Yeah, I have to... Uh, you know, it's been kind of in the back of my mind, but i got to double-check the flyer and all that stuff, and, you know, as, as the year goes on, we'll start spamming the hell out of that thing, too, I'm sure. Sure, man. I'll get it on our, on our end, too, for you. But, yeah, that's... That's cool. Yeah, I know they always have a lot of uh, a lot of interesting stuff. Corey likes to go usually to Maryland. I used to go to it when it was Milwaukee Death Fest, which I guess kind of yeah. tells my age. But but uh, yeah, I saw I saw Cannibal with Barnes on vocals at Milwaukee. Um, I saw I saw a bunch of shit there back in the day. But I've never I've never went to Maryland. Uh, the, I mean, I think it's awesome. Bands play there and stuff. I know they got Gore guys in there this year, Morbid Angel and some other stuff. But I just, it's one of those things I've kind of shot away from just because I, there's a, there's almost too much variety for me. And I think I would end up missing stuff. Plus, I'm also kind of like socially retarded. So I don't usually go to stuff like that. <laughs> but it's it's cool. I mean, you know. I don't know, but yeah, you guys play in Europe, man. Yeah, definitely let me know when you can talk about that. I'll plug the hell out of that, too. I think that's great. You guys are going over there. That seems to be the the mecca of all of it. I uh, was talking with uh, the cut-up guys the other day, and we were talking about, uh, and actually the God to Throne uh, dude we had on, too, 
I can't think of his name. Uh, we had him on, and he was talking about all the festivals and how they go watch all these bands and stuff. That that would just be amazing. So. Yeah, definitely. Well, uh, I'm sure between uh, now and and then, between now and then, I'm sure we'll definitely be able to to get back with you and talk about that stuff too. Oh yeah, man, definitely. That'd be fucking amazing. Um, and if you're cool uh, talking a little bit more, hopefully I'm not keeping you. Uh, was going to ask you about uh, horror. So I'm, you know, I'm, half the other part of the podcast is horror shit. So uh, you want to talk some horror before I let you go? Oh yeah, yeah, I totally, I totally blanked out on that. But yeah, it's, it's been something I've been thinking about for a while too. And you know, like I said, I'm into well, not just me, the other guys too. I'm into like retro eighties horror. You know, the good shit, not the exactly not the remakes, not any of that stuff. But uh, yeah, I kind of drew inspiration from some of the stuff that I'm a fan of for the writing of the album, you know? Um, nice. Uh, a lot of it was rooted in, like, kind of Lovecraftian themes and, uh, you know, like, unnameable, undescribable evil things. And uh, uh, that coupled with, you know, like, uh, I guess most notably John Carpenter's movie The Prince of Darkness, um, Kind of like uh, I really was into the uh, the notion of kind of a a world that's like a mirror image of our own, where whatever the powers that be, creators, or whatever, uh, can be an inversion of what I guess the uh, Christian definition is, you know, of right. the creator. So something that's just inherently evil and exists to to undermine and destroy. And I kind of that and ever end with it, you know, I had to kind of write according to the uh, the album title and stuff because that was already decided before I joined the band. But right. Yeah, like definitely stuff like that influenced me. You know, we um, Yeah, I love I'm a big John Carpenter fan. Dude. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's. Uh, um, we can talk about John a minute here. I, you know, and his his man, the soundtracks for his fucking movies are fucking outstanding. It's like God. It's like yeah, I actually, I actually, um, I, I got his solo albums that have come out recently. And aren't they great? I, Those lost themes, aren't they great? Yeah, yeah. I really like Volume Two. I fell in love with that Volume Two. I don't know why. He's so talented, man. He's so great. You know, we've, I've, uh, he's one of those people. I'll tell you a funny story. He's, he's hands down my favorite director, filmmaker, whatever. And I've shot away from ever trying to meet him or interview him or anything else just because I, if he was a dick to me, I would absolutely die. It would absolutely kill me. So I've always shot away from, uh, when I was growing up, he was at a Fangoria convention that I was, that I went to out in, uh, um, I believe it was in, I think it was the one in New York, and this was in like the '90s or whatever. And I completely did not go anywhere near him because I was scared to death to meet him. Because it's one of those things where it's like, if I met him, it would absolutely destroy me. And then when uh, Vampires came out, he was promoting it at Dragon Con when I was living in Atlanta. Same thing. He's there, completely shot away from him. I was just like, no, I don't want to meet him because if he was if he was nasty to me in any way, it would absolutely kill kill me. And the, the the concert you're talking about, it didn't come anywhere near here. He did no dates in the South, which I thought was crazy because, you know, he's from Kentucky and he did no Southern dates. None. Oh, uh, bummer. Well, hopefully in the future. I don't know what the deal was with that. I've never I've never heard or know. I don't know an explanation for that, but I know they did no Southern dates. I figure for sure it's like, oh, he'll definitely play Atlanta. We can go see him in Atlanta or Miami or something, but just didn't happen. So, but, but yeah, that's awesome, man. Yeah, I'm a big fan. And uh, what's, what's your favorite? Do you have a favorite film of his? Well, it's not necessarily horror, but it would have to be Big Trouble in Little China. 
you know? Oh, what a great movie. What a great movie. But I love it, I love it all, you know? Like, I, I work at a tattoo shop, so I have, you know, they live in constant rotation, you know? That's awesome. Giant fan of the thing. All of this shit, really, you know? Um, maybe all the way up through, uh, well, no. I was going to say In the Mouth of Madness, but that, that Cigarette Burns episode he made for uh, Masters of Horror. Yep. Really awesome yeah, it was good. You know, I think my if I if I had to pick a favorite, I, and 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 again, it's funny because it's not really horror, but I would I would probably have to say Escape from New York is probably my favorite thing he ever did. Oh yeah, I'm obsessed with that movie. I don't know why. I just and 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 any time he's working with Kurt Russell, it's just gold. You know. Oh yeah. Except for maybe Escape from L.A. I'm not really crazy about that movie, but Escape from New York, I fucking love. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's, Escape from L.A. You know, everything's good until that. that Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, that's bad. It's <laughs> it's really bad. It's just yeah, I don't know. But I'm trying to think. There was uh, I know a lot of people don't like this movie. I really like Christine a whole bunch too. Oh, Christine is great. The soundtrack for Christine <clears throat> gives me chills. Like every time I listen to it. And at, at a funny point to make about Christine too is that's one of the only films. Uh, that has ever been done that Stephen King actually didn't throw a fit about. Like, usually when his books are, I'm sure you know this, they get, like, The Shining or whatever he threw a fit about, even though I love it. But, you know, he he just doesn't like a lot of the time when his movies get made into films, or excuse me, his books get made into films. And I know Christine was something he was actually really happy about, so. Right. Which is rare, because he just, people don't really, I guess he's just so, just doesn't like it, and I guess I can appreciate that too. But, but yeah, I always like Christine. I remember seeing Christine at a drive-in when I was in like second grade, and I just thought it was fucking awesome. Yeah, uh, and actually, yeah. I, oh, go ahead. Oh, um, I was gonna say, yeah, I, I I geek out so hard on that stuff to the point of you know having to watch everything with commentary. And oh yeah, same here. <laughs> Same here. Really into it, you know? Same here. Now, did you buy the? Have you been buying the Blu-rays that Scream Factory put out of his stuff? No, not yet. Not yet. I need to though. Because God, man. The for- well, I'll tell you that one of the coolest things they did, and I know he didn't do all these, j- just the first one or whatever, and then the score for the third one. But that Halloween box set that they put out a couple of years ago, if you bought the limited one, you got the TV version of of the original Halloween on Blu-ray. It was the only way you could get it. And then, I don't know if you're familiar with uh, Horror's Hollowed Grounds. A friend of mine, Sean Clark, that does those, he did a Horror's Hollowed Ground episode for every fucking movie. Wow. Which is crazy. But <laughs> So if you, you ever get a chance, you should check out his stuff. It's actually really cool. And we had him on as a guest uh, last year. Uh, he's just a cool guy. He's busy as fuck all the time. He does all these conventions and uh, is... Uh, does like uh management over a lot of these uh, horror actors and stuff but yeah he's a really cool dude but he does a lot of stuff like that but yeah those uh the thing too if you're a big fan of the thing the two disc blu-ray screen factory put out of that last year is actually really fucking sick too and there's interviews with everybody of course except kurt but yeah and i hate that right? do what now yeah, I mean, he's busy. You know, I'll tell you a funny story real quick that nobody knows uh, other than my co-host. Uh, we actually contacted um, Kurt Russell's agent because I wanted to have him as a guest on our podcast. And believe it or not, they actually didn't tell me no. They just said, you're just going to have to wait. So we're basically in this long-ass line waiting to get an interview with him, but they did not tell me no, which I could not fucking believe. So, That's awesome. And it would be real short. It's probably not... We're, we're going to be lucky if we get fucking 15 minutes, but uh, yeah, I'm just waiting. And every t- I'll contact uh, every so often. We just kind of try to keep tabs on It's like, are we still in line? It's like, yeah. It's like, okay, cool. So, but who knows if anything will ever come of it, but it makes me happy just knowing that I got to talk to somebody that represents him because it's like I would fucking shit if I met him. It's like, can you put this eye patch on real quick and take a picture with me? But <laughs> just because I'm such a fucking dork for Snake Plissken, but 
And you know, and I don't know if you've heard about this yet or not. Robert Rodriguez is actually remaking Escape from New York. Yeah, I heard that they're remaking it, but I, I didn't know who was involved. That's yeah, he's like, he's who's directing it, so I actually feel like there's hope for it. Although I can't, between you and me, I can't, and I'll try to give it a chance, but I can't imagine anybody playing that role except Kurt Russell. But yeah, I I, I hear you on that too. I mean, I, I've heard some rumblings about a remake of Big Trouble in Little China with like The Rock. Now that's that actually supposed to happen, which actually makes me want to throw up. But um, I have no interest in seeing that. Yeah, I just, there's some things, you know, it's like, um, next year, now, now there's a, there's some kind of Halloween movie coming out this year, but next year, there's a Halloween film coming out that Danny McBride, the comedian, is actually directing, like a serious film, and supposedly, John Carpenter is doing the score for it and producing it. I think I might have heard something about that. And right? that comes out Halloween 2018. Now, there is there is some kind of Halloween film that's supposedly coming out this Halloween, but it has nothing to do with what I just talked about. So, And, I, and I'm not for sure. I know he's at least producing the Danny, Mc, Danny McBride uh, Halloween film, but he supposedly has been asked and is supposedly rumored to be scoring it, so I don't know. Yeah, it's exciting. I mean, just to, I would, you know, hell, the soundtrack, even if the movie sucked, it's like if he did the soundtrack, I'm sure the soundtrack would be sick, so, but. Yeah, yeah, going back to uh, Halloween 3, you know, I hadn't, I guess I hadn't seen that since I was little, and I recently watched it with my wife, and I was like, I was like, this is awesome, strange, but the music is fucking killer. Oh, it's, it's great. Well, you know, a funny story about Halloween 3, um, I I know a lot of people hate it. I absolutely fucking love it. I love that movie. I love Tom Atkins. I think, you know, stop it. I just, I love the way it ends and the, um, and you being from California, I was actually going to ask you this real quick. Have you ever been to where they shot that up in Northern California? No, no. Um, they shot the fog there too. I, I actually, a couple years ago, went to the very lighthouse that they filmed the fog at with my wife, and it was it was awesome. You know, it was a little, a little one of my nerdy horror bucket list things. Like, is is it? Am I saying this right? Is it San Reyes? Is that right? It's, yeah, Point Reyes. Point Reyes. Okay. Well, you know, they shot Halloween three there too, up there where that lighthouse is. Scenes from it. Scenes of it. So you've been there. That's Dude, that's fucking amazing. Not that I would ever try to bounty you into doing this, but maybe you can draw me a road map or something. Because if I ever get out to San Diego, that's something that I, and it's probably a million miles away, I would love to go do, because I've never got to go do that. Oh, yeah. And on, on the coastal drive back down, we uh, passed through the town where they filmed Village of the Dam, too. Oh, my God, dude. That's fucking awesome. That's fucking amazing. Yeah, that's really fucking cool. Our boy Clint Eastwood used to be narrowed. <laughs> oh wow! Okay, okay, that's awesome. Yeah, that's really cool. I guess the, the my only thing that I've got to go do uh, Carpenter esque. Uh, you know, some of the scenes that they live were actually shot in Atlanta. Oh, okay. Not a lot of it. Very, very little. But I've actually I've actually nerded out and went and looked at some of the places where he shot uh, years ago. It was kind of cool. But I, I don't know, man. I've always wanted to go up there where that that's cool as fuck. So you actually went down to the to the uh, to the lighthouse and shit. Yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's kind of a national park now. You know, you can go and check it out. It, it's pretty cool. It gets pretty treacherous, I guess, when it's stormy out. But yeah, it was it was a lot of fun. That's awesome. That's really cool. Yeah. Um, do, now, uh, when you were a kid, what was the, what was the first horror movie that you saw where you were like, holy shit, and it freaked you out? First horror movie I ever saw was, uh, when I was, I guess, six, five or six, I, I woke up in the early hours and I, I kind of crept out into the hall and my brother and sister were watching the first Creep show. Oh, fuck Yeah.
Right. See, for me, the first thing I watched, and it, it and it it sounds like really cheap and generic, but it's the truth. The first thing I ever saw in this movie still scares the hell out of me was the first Exorcist. I, I can't watch that movie by myself. And I sound so lame. I sound so lame saying that, but I came from like a. I'm not a religious person, but I came from a very religious family and a super religious background, and that movie f- scared the fuck out of me as a kid. That movie is still gnarly, you know, and especially when you see the little the little frame by frame flashes of Captain Howdy's face and stuff. Oh yeah, it's fucking awesome. You know, I'll tell you something. I want to do. I've never got to do this. They actually made the stairs, the famous stairs from that film, they actually made that like a public landmark. You can go fucking hang out on them and shit. Oh, really? Yeah, I I totally... And I'll just go ahead and tell you this, because I don't have an active death metal band. If you guys get out on the road, you've got to go get some band photos on those fucking stairs. If, 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 even if you don't want to use them, send them to me and I'll geek out over it. Because that's just I, that's something I've always wanted to do. I would love to go there with like my doctor mask on and shit and do some shit for the podcast. Just have my fucking pictures on those fucking stairs. <laughs> oh, yeah. I always thought that would be fucking sick. But, but yeah, that movie, when I was a kid, scared the hell out of me. And, of course, the, the, like the third and the fourth... Uh, Actually, the second, third, and fourth Friday the Thirteenth scared me as a kid. The first two Nightmare on Elm Streets, uh, original Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I absolutely love that movie as a kid. Horrified me, scared me half to death. Yeah, they don't they don't make them like that anymore. You know? No, they don't. And if you you know, I was talking with a buddy of mine about this recently. If you think about it, everything that was slasher in the 80s, is now paranormal shit. Every film that comes out is paranormal something. Yeah, it's the, it seems like that's the big ticket these days, you know? It, it, it really is. And, you know, the only ones, and I don't know if you're a fan of these or not, the only newer horror films that I've actually went and watched that I actually was like, you know, this is actually kind of cool. I like the, and this is probably stupid, but I, I like the Conjuring movies. I don't know. I think they're cool. Yeah, I, I dig them, you know? I mean, to me... It's all entertaining. I, I, you know, I just wish that not everything was based on a musical cue these days. You know? <laughs> yeah. Some bass or eerie string sounds, and then you know something's going to jump. I up, agree but. with you. I agree with you. I kind of have. A, I have a. I have a soft spot for those movies because the. I'm a big Tampa Bay Lightning hockey fan, and the the guy that plays Ed Warren in those movies, I can't think of his name to save my life. He's actually from Tampa. Oh, okay. And he goes to all the games and shit, and it's just fucking cool. So I, I, I guess I kind of have a uh, kind of a hometown soft spot for those movies just because he's in it and stuff. And I, I don't know, the whole Ed and Lorraine Warren thing I think is interesting. In fact, that second Conjuring movie I think would have been even cooler if they had done the whole Amityville thing. Because they, they definitely investigated the Amityville house. And actually, I'm going to share something yeah. with you that nobody else knows other than my co-host that we're doing. We're actually going to be going and interviewing. Uh, I don't know if it's going to be over the phone because we haven't, we haven't been contacted by his lawyer or whatever yet. But I'm in the process of interviewing the uh, Butch, the guy from uh, the one that went around and killed his family that's in prison in New York. I'm actually trying to get him on the podcast. I'm trying to get Ronnie DeFeo on the podcast. Whoa, that's awesome. I'm dead serious, and I've went through all the legal stuff uh, with it, and I've talked with his lawyer, and I had to mail a, a letter to the prison and stuff. And uh, So this is news for everybody that when they listen to this episode, because I've never talked about this. But yeah, we're in the process of getting it done, and I don't know if it's going to be over the phone. I don't know how long we're going to get. I don't know if we're going to get 30 minutes or 20 minutes or 15 minutes or whatever. But yeah, I want to interview Ronnie DeFeo. I just think it'll be fucking sick. So. Nice. I, I will be anxiously awaiting that. Yeah, man. I mean, I'm working on it, and we're we're to my knowledge, it's never been done on a podcast. So, uh, hopefully, we're doing something unique with it or whatever. And and Corey, my co-host, is actually from the Long Island area, and he has ties to Amityville. So, not to the house or anything, but he had uh, an aunt or something that lived in that area and stuff. So, we're gonna we're gonna see what we can do about it. But I don't know if we're gonna do it in person or we're gonna do it over the phone or what we're doing. But I'm. I've been working on it for almost a year, so we'll see. But but I'm dead serious, so. Very cool. 
Yeah, yeah, it's kind of weird. I love those movies too. I think those movies are fucking they're fun to watch. The third one's a little much, but the first two are just fucking sick. I love both those movies. Yeah, I have to revisit those. You know, we we recently out of boredom watched the, the remake of Ryan Reynolds. I've never seen it. Is it good? Uh, uh not really. Okay. I don't know. Um, you know, more of the same musical cues, like the same kind of modern horror movie tropes and stuff. And then for some reason, like when he's breaking down the wall in his basement, he gets really fucking ripped. I don't know. <laughs> That's weird. I'll tell you a movie. Not, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, I was going to say definitely not menacing like the original. You know, right? Yeah, that movie's that movie's definitely good. I really like the second one a whole bunch. I love the whole thing with the whole incest thing between the brother and the sister. I thought that was awesome. Yeah, God, it's been so long since I've seen that. Oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. Uh, but I was going to tell you. Uh, and I, I just got a kick out of this. Um, and I just thought this was also really, really bizarre at the same time. Um, they were, when, when we were, when we contacted the correctional facility in New York about talking to him, I couldn't believe nobody had tried to interview him, like on a podcast. So. But, I mean, the paperwork that I had to do to let them crawl up my ass to even get to do this is nuts. Yeah. I could imagine so. Well, and the other thing was, was he was wanting... I'll tell you something. This is really scary. This People listening, to hopefully get a kick out of this. this. This actually freaked me out. They were real adamant about me not giving him any contact info. Because apparently a couple years ago, a woman and a man that interviewed him... Uh, wanted to, um, apparently he was like harassing them from the prison. <laughs> so, that might not be bad though. You know, you could uh, have him do like a little monthly thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, yeah. It's, it was pretty strange, but I was just like, that's, that's fucking crazy. But, um, I was going to tell you, uh, if you're bored, uh, a newer horror movie that I got kind of a kick out of, and I don't know if you've seen it yet or not. Have you seen Incarnate with Eric Eckhart? No, I haven't. Let me tell you what's kind of cool about that movie. There's two things about that movie. It's not great, but I thought it was interesting that he's a demonologist, but he's an atheist. So he does, he does, he does exorcisms in it, but he's not a religious man. And he's bound to a wheelchair. And the other cool thing about it, and I just thought this was neat, there's a his assistant in the film is wearing old decapitated earache era t shirts through the whole film. Oh wow. And I just thought it was cool. I don't know. I, I'm not saying it's great, but it's and it of course it is paranormal because it's made nowadays, but it's you ought to check it out. It's I actually thought it was kind of cool. I went and watched it with, with with my wife, and I actually thought it was, uh, I actually thought it was cool. Yeah, that, I mean, sounds cool. Someone's got the finger on the, the metal pulse, you know? <laughs> I mean, it's, I, I thought that, that was the coolest part of it, was, you know, he's walking around wearing a fucking, uh, Nildy shirt, Nility, or however you say that record, shirt, and, and all this stuff, and I was like, that's fucking cool. Like, the whole movie, he's got on, like, a different old decapitated shirt, so. I don't, I don't know whose idea yeah. was to do that, I just thought it was cool. Okay, and I'm going to tell you a true story. I've never seen that movie. I'm going to have to watch that now. I had no idea. If you, if you watch any of them, I'd say to watch that one. Okay. It's just kind of like whatever. But yeah, yeah, there's a little, uh, I'm pretty sure it's a little a video snippet of them playing a song. That's crazy. I did not know that. The house they used is actually here in San Diego, too. Really? Yeah. I'm going to have to watch that. I had no idea. That's really cool. Yeah, I, it, 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 it's, it's cool. You know, I mean, I kind of, I don't know, I have a gripe with found footage movies sometimes, but it, it's a cool one. Yeah, that is cool. I'll tell you a funny story about me. When uh, when I was growing up and my, my parents were separated when my dad was living in Tennessee, um, Johnson City... 
about an hour and 20 minutes up the road is where they shot the original Evil Dead, and I've actually been out there on that, where they shot all that. Oh, nice. Yeah, I have, uh, I have Bruce Campbell's autobiography. I, uh, I love that shit. All that stuff. Oh, man, I'm a, I'm a huge fan. Have you been watching Ash vs. Evil Dead? I kind of fell off, but I, I saw the... Most of the first season. I need to get back on track. The cli- the cliffhanger of season two pissed me off, but which I won't reveal here. But it's yeah, it, I think it's great. I I dig it and um, I love love those movies. I I could not get into the remake. Did you like the remake? Because I didn't like it. I dug it. I, I guess I liked it more because it wasn't like a blatant, you know, remake. It was kind of like a an alternate version of the story. So. You know, you didn't have someone failing and being ash or anything like that. You know. Yeah, I did. T- that, those are those are some big shoes right there. <laughs> oh yeah, and the gore factor was was pretty top notch. I was really hyped on that, at least. Cool. And are are you a Phantasm fan at all? Obviously, we named our podcast after it. Sort of we'll probably get sued, but uh, I- oh yeah, yeah. I I, I, I like. Pretty much anything that Don Coscarelli does or has done, you know. Like Bubba Don Hotep. Hotep. Bubba Hotep is one awesome. Of my favorites. But yeah, I mean, everything about Phantasm is great. The music, the casting, you know, Angus, Angus Grimm is fucking incredible. Yeah, he's great. Did you watch the new one? Have you watched part five yet? Ravenger. No, I haven't. You know what, man? I'll actually defend it on here. Coscarelli just produced it. He didn't direct it. I'm not really super familiar with the guy that did direct it, but I thought they did a good job. It's like a straight-to-video kind of thing, but I actually dug it. I thought it was really cool. And then on April the 11th, I believe, there's a box set that comes out with all five films in it on Blu-ray. It's really cool. I'm, I actually just ordered that off of Amazon. It's like 80 bucks. Oh, shit. I might have to do that, too. Because those films never stay in print long, it seems like. But uh, but yeah, and then if you've not seen it, the the 4K remaster they did of uh, of the original Phantasm is absolutely gorgeous. We Corey and I went to a horror festival uh, in Georgia last year, so we could actually see it in the theater. Nice. Yeah, we're big fans of the obviously name of our podcast but we just i just love those movies i don't know i always have well the funny thing is is my favorite film is probably the second one yeah i love the- i have to revisit those too i, I it's, oh god it's been so long since i've seen anything but the first one you know i i love the second movie i love reggie with that four barrel shotgun that he makes with the like the it's fucking nasty and of course, the flamethrower and all the other cool shit he has in it. And, and got it. I would love to. In my driveway, if I ever had money, I'd love to have a Hemi Cuda and obviously a fucking uh, Plymouth Fury. That way, I got Christine in the and I got the Phantasm car and Christine in the driveway. So that'd be fucking sick. Oh yeah. But but yeah, man. Well, look, I I can't thank you enough for doing this. This has been a lot of fun. I hope you've had fun. I've had a blast. Oh yeah. Thanks so much for having me. You know. I had my shit halfway together. I could have had a more concise uh, <laughs> talk, but um, if we get back on with the other dude, you know, definitely. Hey, man! Look, all you have to all you have to do is figure out a time, and and we'll do this. I'll I'll interview hopefully the whole band if you can get all of all of you guys. Not that I haven't had a blast talking to you, but I would love to have all of you on if if that was cool because uh, it would just it would just mean a lot to me as a fan, and and you know it'd be cool. And I hope I didn't talk your head off. I can go for hours and hours talking about this shit. So. Oh, yeah, me too, man. Me too. Hey, what's up, folks? This is Sam from Condemned, San Diego Death Metal, and you're listening to the Phantasm Podcast. Dubbing suit from Phantasm. Good evening, Walnut Lake Shoppers. It's closing time. The store will be closing in 15 minutes. 
But the night crew still has work to do. Because there's one last customer who isn't satisfied. No, this cream keeps calling you. He's driving us nuts. Leave me alone. He wants to slash their prices. Who's there? He wants to cut their inventory. You're crazy! He wants to chop until they all drop. I saw him kill Linda. And now... He's turning their retail store. There's gonna be one more killing here tonight. Into a wholesale slaughterhouse. <laughs> From the producers of Evil Dead 2 and Pulp Fiction comes a new chapter in terror. Bruce Campbell. Ted Raimi, Renee Estevez, and Sam Raimi in Intruder, A New Dimension in Terror. I'm just crazy about this story. Every legend is based on fact. Every myth is grounded in truth. For 17 years, the town of Haddonfield, Illinois, has been haunted by a night when evil roamed the streets and a madman ruled the night. Everyone knows his name. Now, everyone will know the truth. I knew what he was, but I never knew why. of Michael Myers. See Jimmy Lane as Reno Miller, a man driven to the very edge. Stuart Gordon, the director of Fortress, The Pit and the Pendulum, and Reanimator, takes you into the dungeons of Castle Dorsino. Now an American family... Welcome to Castle Riley, lady. ...will inherit a legacy of evil. They say the castle is haunted. And a master of modern horror. Oh. Will unleash his most terrifying creation. Stuart Gordon's Castle Free. Oh. There's somebody else here! There's somebody in the castle! We want you to search the castle. Giorgio Dorsino. He was never buried. She kept him alive. He's here somewhere in the castle. Reanimators Jeffrey Combs and Barbara Crampton in Stuart Gordon's Castle Free. Watch that crate! That's very expensive! For centuries, 
Yes, he has remained hidden. Watching. Waiting. You And now, he is coming. He knows your secret hopes. He sees your private dreams. And he can grant your every desire. Well, I'm not a <laughs> greedy man. How about a million dollars? I remember a certain potentate whose last party was talked about for centuries. Oh, God, how I'd love to host a party like that. I wish to be beautiful forever. Even if it kills you. As you wish. <laughs> was it worth it? Would you like to escape? Yeah. No! Beg for your life. Help me! Pray for your soul. But whatever you do... Ready to play? Don't make a wish. <laughs> wish Master. Careful what you wish for.